pot to. <laughs> yeah, I, had a little, I just had a uh, peppermint uh, uh, lo- lozenger thing I was sucking on, so I had to get rid of that. And was... And welcome back to episode seven of the Unpaid and Underrated Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Big Keith, joined as always by Big Joey. Hey. And this week we have special guest Emmett. Hello. Hello, crew. Welcome. 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 Let's uh dive right in, boys. What are you what are you drinking over there tonight, Emmett? I am drinking a clear American. This is their red, white, Ooh. and blue pop. So it tastes like a bomb pop. It's pretty right. good. They're 78 cents at Walmart. I'm unfamiliar. So is that is that just like a a, a spark? I mean, it's not a sparkling, it's bottled, but what is uh what is sparkling that? Sparkling water can be bottled. It is a sparkling yeah. water. Okay. Yeah. Um, when they're yes. in a bottle this size, they're not as bubbly as like a can. But uh, yeah, so it's like half half flat already. But at seventy nine cents yeah. for a large amount, that's pretty fair. Exactly. The price is pretty good. Hard to beat. Flavor is really good. <clears throat> good. I like that. I like that. I uh, got the old uh, Wegman's lime again this week because uh, yeah, the grocery stores are hard to get to. Not not really. No, well, it is. Oh, yeah. By that, I guess I mean grocery stores that have a variety. I, I get the ah, same, like I get yeah. the same six, and I rotate them. Like, you know, we're not uh, we're not big, uh, you know, Midwest guys over there that have the variety of all these stores. I don't know where they. I feel like they say something different every week, and I'm like, I don't know if they're sitting there, like if they're shopping all over the fucking country, or like where they're getting that much variety, or maybe maybe they are saying the same ones every four weeks, and I'm just not picking up on it. But I feel like I feel like they have a lot more variety, but they also probably like the variety whereas i like like four sparkling waters and i'm gonna drink the same four sparkling waters until i die so it's just bad. mary it's mary's shopping ingenuity she just knows yeah. where to get things uh i have the same thing i have been having for a while the uh, non-alcoholic guinness i love it I did. yeah I did. definitely a little uh a little easier when not everyone's shit canned and <laughs> it's a little it's a little easier to, to host a podcast that way sometimes uh does you <laughs> And uh, as we talked about it on our pre-show a little bit, we're we're all wearing red tonight. So Joey and I are both rocking the unpaid and underrated shirt. There are uh, last Tanner just texted me this morning and said there's only three three spots left. Uh, you know, so you guys better get on that and help us buy that speedboat. And uh, big hit which uh, which red shirt are you walk rocking tonight, buddy? I'm rocking the raw power Masonomic shirt. Nice. That's, that's a good that's one. It's got my that's favorite a... animal on it. It's hard to go wrong with it. I think it's always funny too because I lift equipped so. Raw power is just a fun little <laughs> joke a little with ironic. it too. I mean, you <laughs> might you, you do at least stretch raw, maybe. Like, I mean, there's there's something in your in in your in your whole ability that you do raw. Probably, it's not Saturday. Let's let's not get into that. <laughs> well, uh... well, as Jason Coker puts <laughs> it in West Side versus the Raw, lifting raw is easy, and you can do it all the time. Yeah, that's true. Uh, did you guys get a chance to watch the uh, Strength Co. video that they put out last week? I think it came out on Friday of last week. Nope. Oh, it was pretty good. They not. just uh, they just talked about the plates. Uh, it was Tanner and Tommy. Tommy must have been in town for something, and uh, you know they kind of went through. And it was funny. I I feel like uh, there was one time where they were like, "Oh, there's a there's actually I think I might be mixing up one that Grant did, but between the two, because Grant did something similar on one of his videos where they were like, we're showing off the strength coat plates that have kind of like been, been in like open weather for a couple of years. And they're like, Oh, there's some rust on it. And you just like scratched it off basically because it was just surface for us. So it was pretty cool to see that they uh, both had some similar content come out. Uh, did, uh, those, did... So knowing now that Tanner and Tommy have been in the same room together, those guys better get to some of the drinks we brought to them at yeah. the lift hard, live easy. That's true. That's, right? That's like, true. I thought the idea was that Tanner or Tommy forgot to bring them home, so he mm-hmm. couldn't be reviewing them. And now that they have them, they're still not reviewing them. Well, let's see. I'm trying to... I mean, they had to have been together at least once, probably. Well, I don't know. I don't know if they've been together. Because a lot of the YouTube videos are recorded uh, earlier than, you know... It's not... You know, they have a handful banked, but yeah. No, because sure. at, at the last episode, they mentioned they were together pretty recently. Gotcha. Well, let me just keep your eyes peeled, I guess. It'll uh, stay tuned, if you will. Um, did you see the uh, the little powerlifting? Uh, what is it? What do we have? We have another federation now. I mean, that's the that's the the, the hundred percent what we needed was. Are you talking more... about mine? Oh well, yeah. yeah. What did you start the fucking Dilf Dilf powerlifting or something? The, the powerlifting you? extremely expensive power <laughs> operations <laughs> operative or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's did funny you... is as I posted that I was dying. I was laughing so hard at making a pee poo joke. And I was like, 
how do I turn this into a pee pee poo poo joke? <laughs> and I told Morgan about it. And she goes, you know what? I like it so much. I'm going to join twice. <laughs> and I was like, there it is. That's the elite level. That's the pee pee poo poo level. <laughs> Two, 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 two simultaneous memberships. Yeah, you just pay the membership twice and you get to pee pee poo poo. Anyway, no, I don't give a fuck about the KGB. I don't get like I don't care about any of that stuff. Powerlifting drama is so bozo bullshit. Um, like and as somebody, I used to lift at WRPF. Yeah, it might affect. I'm I'm curious if it'll affect you. That's the only thing I get because like it sounds like WR like sounds like anyone that was running WRPF meets in in America has pretty much switched gears. Um, I am curious though if they got anyone because you have your your Canadian contingent of the WRPF mm-hmm. up there. I'm curious if they're going to stick with the WRPF or if they're going to get kind of brought in under the umbrella. So that's something uh, that actually actually that would be the uh, not that I even care that much. I was just I sounds like WRPF's gone in America now at this point. So when I hear something, you'll hear something. Sounds good. That sounds good. But everybody, go join Pee Pee Poo Poo. Yeah, yeah. Let's it's do it's it. the it's the best new. Cause now, like Dave's not even in XPC. Like, I guess that's. Uh, I think he stole. I didn't. I didn't. Did I miss that? I, I kind of saw the sentence. We got kicked out of the XPC. Oh, I didn't see that. So maybe that's worth a, a direct uh, message. But I know yeah. that they were they were set to host the Arnold, and they sent out yeah, all the yeah, invitations. Yeah. And then somebody else was like, "Well, here's all the invitations for the Arnold." And Dave was like, "I thought we were doing that." And apparently, they were like, "Oh no, we changed our mind. and didn't tell you." What the fuck? That's... Yeah, so they're they're gonna do their own Arnold with hookers and blackjack or something, and uh-huh. and forget the Arnold. Yeah, so we get uh, it's almost worth getting Katie and Dave on in a couple of weeks, and if we have an open spot, just to hear that one because that's uh, yep. I want to hear someone talk some shit. That sounds that sounds pretty entertaining to me. Uh... The whole XPC thing with Dave's always been really funny to me. Yeah, because the XPC is like it's literally run out of one gym in Columbus, Ohio. Mm-hmm. And it's a geared lifting gym and a geared lifting federation and solely geared lifters with monolifts. So Dave only really joined when he said, well, I'm going to run it like USPA because I'm not buying yeah. all this other equipment. And they're like, OK, I need someone to host meets for me and get my, you know, make go make me some money. And I'll, let the, I'll change all these rules for you guys, because that was like literally like two months before the meet or something, maybe not even so uh, of the, the of the 2023 meet. And he proceeded to put on like the most legit XPC oh, yeah. meet ever. Yeah. The mm-hmm. biggest XPC me ever. Um, like, I know a lot of people have literally just kind of treated it as a joke. And if you've ever been to the XPC at the Arnold, it's probably the worst powerlifting me ever. <laughs> like, nice. they start lifting at like eight or nine a.m. and they're not done until after five. Ugh. Yeah, I was there. You and I were there together on Saturday, and I actually don't think I watched a single person lift. The I setup last mm-hmm. year at the Arnold was really weird. Yeah, because they had it set up to where you were facing like an aisle. So if you're squatting, you're literally just facing everyone who's deciding just to walk right by it. So like that's exactly what you want to see when you're holding hundreds of pounds on your back is just people just walking right in front of you, not caring at all about what you're doing. Yep. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. I do remember thinking that was that was a weird decision. Ah, well, like I said, we don't need any more powerlifting feds. We just need pee pee poo poo. Well, speaking yeah. of decisions, I got a I got an announcement I want to break for you guys. There's some some breaking news, you know. Uh, this is big big keys, big announcement. Um, you know, I got I, I got to let everyone know. You know, I'm 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 shit. I'm stuttering here during my fucking big announcement. Are you gonna uh, cry? No, but I am. I am leaving. I'm uh I'm I'm leaving Western New York this December to go to uh Crew Falls, baby. Running it back, going back to Crew Falls December to remember. Bob book book booked my tickets last night. So I'm excited for that. I'm just excited for the selfies that'll come out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the drunk, the drunken stories of what was your favorite part of the week? This is big key that the, <laughs> the mass the 2023 where it's like a 40 second intro. And then like the person talking for 20 seconds and we're all drunk. Yeah, that will be good stuff. But no, the wife talked me into that. I was very much on the fence. I was definitely 50, 50, if not more like 40, 60 to not go. And then, she was just like, just do it. Like if, she was like, what's holding you back? I'm like, just the money. And she's like, if it's just the money, it's like, whatever, just fucking do it. So 
you know, here we go. So hopefully it doesn't uh, snow too much, but I'm excited. So if anyone's going, you know, start, start coordinate that on Instagram and DMs and shit. We'll get all that figured out. So I'll stay at the hotel. And my only thing I want to happen this year that didn't happen last year, if uh, Tanner and Tommy's listening or anyone that, uh, you know, lives in Crew Falls, just do something Friday night too. Like I know a lot of people might not be coming until Saturday, but anyone that is there Friday, like let's try to coordinate better than last year because last year's Friday night was a shit show. So, you know, I'm $7,000 yeah, to come in. I'd it. love to get some Friday stuff. Everybody just show up at Little Sweeties. Just crash prices. Well, don't even tell them you're coming. Good. No <laughs> you can live with his sister and his mom. Like, like, uh, well, I mean, his, sister, his sister is significantly stronger than him. We all know that. Yes. So, you know. uh, The odds of me being at the Crew Falls is really slim. Mine uh, were very slim until yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> unless, unless somebody's going to help me pay for it. Because, yeah, it's been an expensive couple of years. Um, so, yeah, the odds of me being there are slim. Uh, it will be my 40th birthday. Oh, nice. In nice. in the first two weeks of December as well. So we had talked about maybe that being my birthday gift, but I that's don't think. Big, that's that's like. That's yeah, like, me paying for my like, own birthday that's like gift. 10 years of birthday <laughs> gift. Like, like a, a, what's, a, what's a, you know, like what's you, a hundred, two hundred dollars is kind of like what you spend on your spouse for your birthdays, give or yeah. take. So that's like, that's like five to 10 birthdays pretty much. So I feel that for sure. Um, yep, yep, yep. Anyway. Uh, I saw one cool thing on, I saw a pretty cool thing on Instagram today. One of my buddies who's a, who's a, uh, like a, a boutique powerlifting gym owner, basically, uh, he has these accountability white, uh, chalkboards so it's like do you, do you know like the uh you know the how many days since the last work incident kind of you know like boards i'm talking about so something similar to that but it's like uh how many how many times has this person been in the gym this year and it's like two guys racing to see who had gone to the gym more times uh one was the guy had put a uh, how many months since this person last uh vaped and another one was uh uh how many days without uh consuming uh uh, ener ener uh, energy drinks. So I just thought that was really cool. And I'm trying to think how I could correlate something like that here. Like what would be, what would be cool enough of something to track of like either doing it consistently or actually eliminating something from your life uh, that to actually track and like have on the, like basically like on a billboard for people. So I don't know. I'm just going to think about that, but it's just like, it was something cool. I'd never seen that. Uh, and he shared it in the store. I was like, that's, that's really like team building kind of thing. Cause it's all I... positive shit. Yeah, I haven't lifted in over a week. Uh, if you guys want a quick update, uh, the the day after we recorded last week, oh, yeah, I was dead. pretty much dead. Uh, it got to the point where I couldn't stand, walk, or talk. Mm. So to the doctor I went, and it turned out I had something called a rhino, rhinotid, rhino something sinusitis, which is an inflammation and infection of my sinus cavity. So for those of you wondering what that feels like, imagine a balloon inside your brain that is slowly expanding every okay. time you do any. I couldn't get out of bed without, I was in tears after our podcast. I was in tears and I told Morgan, I'm very scared. I don't feel good. Okay. Um, yeah. So we, we got on some pills for that. And then today, the pills were supposed to be, I think this was their their 10-day cycle. Today would be their sixth day. And it feels like it's coming back. So we're going to see how tomorrow goes. But yeah, um, you know, just a quick update on, on anybody that was possibly worried about <laughs> voice last week or my appearance. Matt pointed out a couple times I looked like I was a zombie. That's what it was. And I don't wish that on my worst enemy. That was uh, some of the worst pain I've been in. So I can't lift because obviously... Any exertion yeah, it's gonna right now on my sinuses is going to be the worst of times. So I I can't raise my voice, can't yell, you can't yell, can't even raise my voice to the kids. I can't do anything that's even remotely exertion on my body or or anything. So So is that antibiotics or is that just like yeah, um, I was on like antibiotics, uh oh. pills and a steroid spray. Mm. Uh one would take the inflammation down and the other one would kill the infection. Um, but we'll see how I feel in the morning and make sure I don't have to go back. So breaking news, Joey is no longer natty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on the, the nasal trend. We might have to. But either uh... way, I thought I would give everybody, because uh, some people did reach out and ask, because mm -hmm. I did post a story the next day being like, well, figured out what this was. So I figured I'd give everybody a bit of a an input there. But yeah, if uh, don't I, I don't want anybody to ever get that. It's because I have allergies. And what I was doing was in order to breathe, I was doing a nasal spray. Mm -hmm. That was like one of the rinsers. 
that goes and like rinses out your nostrils and kicks it out the other side. Oh yeah. I think that infected me. Oh, I think that, yeah. that was what, it. what did me in. Yeah, that's unpleasant. And yet he said said rhino something. So that doesn't make sense because I think isn't I think rhinoplasty is something to do with like a nose surgery. With your nose, or yeah. So rhino, whatever. And you then had. the sinusitis was the yeah. That's about yeah. right. Worst of times, friends. Please don't get that. Yeah, that's it. Sounds like it's as bad as getting your uh, Instagram account that has four hundred thousand followers deleted, like fucking Paul had uh, there recently. And then uh, just stop calling people names. Well, I mean, he he tries to like it. A lot, a lot of it is like you're a cunt, and then it just like cuts, cuts to black. But it's after he called him a cunt seven times, so it's always it's like so. I'm assuming enough butt hurt people just report him, and he you know just gets pulled down. So, well, now we know the limit is six. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> apparently <laughs> six c words yeah, before you I get banned. We, I think we broke that in our first episode, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have a very uh, brief story. So our, our buddy over at Brimmy Strength DM me today, uh, and he was like, uh, on on Instagram, he was like, "Did you order something today?" And I was just like, "No, I didn't get it. Sh- no, I haven't yet." And uh, he was just like, "Because I guess there was someone that came in with the name Honeycut," and he was like, "He just you know thought it was kind of funny because it's even spelled the same way, which a lot of I see Honeycut out there a lot, but it's usually not spelled the same way." And then uh, he was like. I think when I was go- while I was gone, he said something to the extent of like, "Oh, it, it was a David." And he's like, "Not one of the Davids, just a, just just a David Honeycutt." And then ironically, obviously, anyone listening for too long should know my name's first name's actually David. And I was like, "Well, my name's David Honeycutt, and then my dad's name's David Honeycutt too, but he didn't buy anything either." And then uh, he was like, "Oh, this this is a you know somebody from a, a you know I don't want to dox anyone and say where, but like you know this guy's from this state." And I was like, "Well, ironically, that's where my parents were on vacation right now." So it was just like it was just like there was like seven levels of just like. You know, wow, that's very strange. So, wow. You know, in a in a weird turn of events, the same thing happened to me Uh, while I was dying uh, (laughs) last Friday. I got a message from somebody um, just just close to me here, right, in forty five to an hour minute drive, going, "Hey, uh, I'm also a Molesco. I've never met another Molesco, but I just saw one of your reels. Like, are we possibly related?" Hmm. And so, yeah, that's fun. Because the answer Z? is, yeah, the answer is Zed. Nice. The answer is no, we were not related. We don't know each other's grandparents or anything like that. But like, yeah, that was, that's, that's interesting true. that that kind of yeah. happened to both of us there. Because is that, so I guess I have, is that, I, so you're saying that that's not a, con, like, I, I'm assuming Canada, you know, like it's, it's like Smith and Johnson, like the most popular names up there too, or the Canadians have their own, like most popular last names or most common last names, if you will. It's definitely not Molesco. Okay. I, I, no, I wouldn't, <laughs> I don't know. Sounds fair. No, that is a small world, though, um, which leads us into uh, Big Emmett. Do you want to rate last week's episode that uh, they had Mitch Hooper on? Who? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that was a, one of, a really one, good one episode. Of, one of Joey's buddies. Yeah, we got to meet uh, Mitch the Friday night of the Arnold. That's when he came by the booth. We got to say what's up to him then when he was talking to Tanner and Tommy before his infamous meeting with... Uh, Huck Finn. Huck. I forgot about that. <laughs> um, but it's a good episode. I love how Mitch Cooper just kind of keeps it real in everything that he does. Like he's not afraid to tell people his thoughts and feelings and a uh, fellow strength coach. So big fan of him. Um, so we'll give it a five out of five Atlas stones. Ah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> what about you, Joey? What'd you think of it? Uh, obviously was kind of excited to listen. Um, did appreciate the shout out from Tanner for, you know, um, the only polite way of saying it is harassing Mitch until he did it. (laughs) Um, the first time, the first time was at the deadlift party at pure muscle. Um, I wasn't even, I was wearing the get a grip shirt and then I was like, man, we got to get you on the massonomics podcast. And he was like, yeah, I've heard of them. I'll check it out. And then I think at the Arnold, I was talking to Tanner about it and Tanner's like, yeah, we just couldn't make the schedule work. And then he kind of went radio silent. And then at the other meet where I'm volunteering and Steve's daughter's there and I finally get up, I'm like, oh, you remember me? And he's like, not really. And I was like, oh, we met here and here and here. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I was like, let's get you on the Massonomics podcast. And I had actually messaged Tanner uh, the about two days before and said like, oh, like, what should I say to get him on? And Tanner said, well, he was really worried about scheduling. And he's like, but you just tell him we will change and record it any time to get him on. Nice. And uh, Mitch went, I don't want to be that guy. 
And I was like, mm. all thousands and thousands of the Massonomics listeners want you to be that guy. Like, get on there. We want you on. It's a silly time. You already know what it's about. So it is really cool that Tanner that Tanner shouted me out for that because like it's kind of embarrassing when you're meeting the world's strongest man at a powerlifting meet and you're like, hey, get on my friend's podcast, not even on mine. <laughs> it's like, like so. So I have a podcast, and my podcast is about my buddy's podcast. You should be on their podcast. Yeah, like that's that's such a weird dynamic. Yeah, but uh, it was really cool. Um, you know, not knowing too much about Mitch's personal life, I did meet his wife and baby at that meet. Um, and then they came up a couple times. Lovely, lovely people. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was really cool. So I'm going to give that one uh, five selfies with Mitch Hooper. <laughs> nice yeah i enjoyed it uh it was really cool to hear uh you know tanner talk you know throw out joey's name and i think i even dm'd uh tanner prior to that once i knew they were going to get mitch on and he had mentioned that uh you know you know your influence wasn't nothing as you would say so it was yeah. uh so that was pretty cool um my favorite i have a couple favorite parts but one of them would have been um when when greg or sorry when when mitch mentioned some of the people he's worked with or wants to work with or hasn't worked yet. And he had mentioned uh, Greg Douchey at, and uh, I think I'd have to go back and watch the clip, but I'm pretty sure Tanner fucking started to bust a gut when he uh, mentioned <laughs> Greg Duchette. And like, they didn't, they didn't really say anything other than just like, Oh yeah, we know Greg, but they didn't, uh, you know, obviously spill the beans or anything about the, you know, the, the enormous bit they've been going on with. But I just really found that amusing. Like I, I, like, I just feel like, like Dan and I were like, and you know, had the same mindset of like, oh, he just mentioned that douchebag. Uh, I, I did the great. same thing. I said, yeah, I, I'm yeah, sure. I, hopefully most of us did. Yeah. And then uh, when he was talking about fucking Huck Finn and I was just like, yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah, Huck Finn's been, I don't know, he was such a jackass that, that weekend. And uh, it was kind of. Uh, you weren't even there. Well, that was I've, a special I've, Huck Finn. I've met him weekend. multiple times and I've seen him. You know, every time I've met Huck, he's been about the same guy. So <laughs> it, it was just, yeah, it was just funny, like how he really was just like, you know, he was worried about how he was talking to his wife and stuff. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got, <laughs> I just got a kick out of that whole thing. Um, that's a but, hilarious. Uh, like I remember because that's the I don't usually watch it on YouTube. Sorry, uh, you want to give your rating? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go uh, for a second. Yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, give it uh, five out of five. Uh, Massonomics enormous iPods enormous um i think it's one of the few times that i've watched it on youtube right the kids were in bed it was just the perfect storm that i was like wait a minute i have an hour and a half i can sit down and i'm gonna watch this and the story he told of tom being like karen get me a beer and karen's like f you you've had enough and he's like just do it shut up and she's like no you've had enough and he goes all right don't worry about it and pulls one out of his pocket that's me i would do <laughs> that Right. But only because I know the joke would be I have one in my pocket the whole time. Which but I guess blackout drunk already. You know, yeah. Like, I, I, he was like, this is like he's already blackout drunk. Like uh, on the Friday. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Tommy even told me he was like, I'm not touching anything other than beer today. You're ridiculous. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I thought that was I thought that was really funny. I called Morgan in and I told her the story. She's like, you would do that. I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. I don't know. I I. I enjoy Tom in, in, in short bursts because I think, uh, I can match his energy. I do yeah. have a dude bro side of me, um, that, you know, it, I don't go into some of the other aspects that we won't say the words, but I don't go into some of those aspects, but like just the being a loud jackass, I do have that in me. It is a character mm -hmm. I can play. So when me and Tom get together, it's, it can be quite hilarious. So I can see both sides of that story. But I can also see Saturday. Him. He might have been worse. <laughs> you think he was worse Saturday? Because that's when him and I were like having the most fun, and that's when I avoided him. When he, I was with you, you, actually, I was like, "Were you at the booth when he was there with Doctor Mike?" No, I was a little after that, and that's when Doctor Mike was okay. like, "I'm going to hit that guy." Like that was. Yeah, I thought Doctor Mike was going to fight him. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, last year Chris Duffin and him had a few choice words. That's how what led to the chase match. <laughs> To the to the tag match there. No, I didn't see any of that, but no, I think yeah, I that was, was that I was told I walked in know. and I had my cooler and just Huck gets in my way. What do you got there? And he just reaches in my cooler and starts pulling <laughs> out my beers and my energy drinks. And then I just immediately go, F off, prick. This is my only energy drink. And then he's like, <laughs> Yeah, I won't steal it then. I ended up giving it to him later anyway. But it was just like <laughs> 
I see you once a year. You're way bigger than me, but I can talk to you like this. But it's just because like we just are so close. And Karen was like, that's Joey. Be nice to him. Like it was awesome. <laughs> uh, quick little side thing here. So obviously, if anyone follows Huck, you've seen him. He's, he's been trying to like, you know, piggyback some stuff off of uh, Joey Swole and like mm-hmm. call, you know, you know, he's doing a whole bit where he's basically, you know, saying this is OK. It's not actually bad. So yeah. then so a re- not that's not really relevant to my story. My so speaking of Joey Swole here, my my little segue is like, do you ever think like, do you think he's legitimate, or do you think he actually is like taking money from these girls that he's put on blast just so they can get their OnlyFans in front of fucking like four hundred thousand eyes that people are going to go like find their account and shit? Do you think? I mean, I don't think necessarily that that's probably what's happening, but like, it's not not plausible. Like, like it, he's that could be a pretty decent revenue source. Um, I don't know. It seems it's, unlikely. Cause it's, yeah. he, he definitely like, unless he needed more. Cause yeah, he, like, the I reason, don't, I don't, yeah. the reason he's not on Massonomics right now, I'm pretty sure is cause he just wants money. He won't make appearances without being paid. All right. And I think that like he has enough revenue and enough followers that I don't think he'd need to do that. Um, but at the same time, I don't care. I like yeah. Joey Swole. I like the gym positivity movement. I do think you should stop being gross in the fucking gym. Um, yeah. as much as I want to support, you know, women making their choices and and doing that kind of thing. You know, we've had friends, we you know, mutual friends on this podcast that do that type yeah. of stuff. No, 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 no. So I'm not here to judge them, but at the same time, like if this is a public gym, don't. Well, I'm gonna. This is gonna be gross. Don't snail trail my barbell. Like that's fucking gross. <laughs> like don't Agreed. do that, because it's just gross. It's bad behavior, and people that, you know, would do that type of thing professionally would know better. Yeah. Right. So that's just my opinion on that one. Um, although it is funny when Tom goes, nope, shut up. She's hot. That's also funny to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Tom rose me the wrong way with a lot of that stuff. It's just like, come on, man. Like, I know he's, but he's also just doing it. Like, everyone is he's just a character. Being, everyone's he's a character. fake for likes and shit. So I don't know. He's he's going through some shit, too. I think he's having some kind of surgery today. If you follow his stories and like his, you can tell he's not really making any new, like everything he's posted the past week has just been like old shit or yeah. like him. So I don't know what's really sure. He can take a break. He can chill. Hopefully he's all right. Uh, yep. Yeah, hopefully. Um, well, I think that'll wrap up general topics. So big Emmett, you got a massonomic sponsor read. You want to, you know, lay, lay on us. Yeah. If you want to read or listen to a podcast or watch a podcast, that's kind of about lifting, but it's more about not lifting. Uh, Learn about the culture of the Midwest and Northeast South Dakota, Western Northeast South Dakota, then the Massonomics podcast is for you. You also have great little stickers that come with your orders. Uh, Yeah, go buy a shirt, massonomics.com, listen to the podcast wherever your podcasts are available. Perfect, perfect. Well done. I think that's time. We got to kick all these looky loots out of the Discord and uh, go ahead and get the uh, guests on the horn. What do you think, Joey? Yeah, while we're doing that, just a reminder, um, massonomics.com slash join. Uh, come join the crew. Be on this podcast. You can have as much fun as Emmett just did with me and Keith talking for 20 minutes. <laughs> Sorry, Emmett. <laughs> let's get let's get our guest on the horn so he can have a chance to talk. Uh, Big Emmett, is that you, buddy? This is me. I am here. All right. Now, the first thing I want to get out of the way is we've been calling you Emmett this whole time. Okay, because that's what, you know, you are in the Discord and and, and everything like that. Um, but what should we be calling you right now? Uh, Big Emmett is perfectly acceptable. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Um, so on Discord, you are? Big Emmett. All right. And where can we find you on Instagram? It's a great question. I actually don't know what my Instagram handle is. I I, I know I follow I you. I think it is Emmett Reese Reyes. Yes, it is. Emmett Reese Reyes. So right. that is my full name, essentially. Keith, did you just eat another pepperette in one swift move? Oh, God. I'm glad you caught that because that I was supposed to put that in the notes earlier. Um, it was going to be a, a what, what, what was Keith eating segment real quick. So right before the podcast, I was like a little low on protein. I was like, all right, I, uh, what can I eat real quick? And I had this. Uh, it wasn't by old. I mean, like it's been in the house for a while, but it was didn't expire till next year. But my wife had bought a. Remember that uh that that brand Epic I think it is that they make like the really good bison meat sticks. Um, yep. So they, they have this they have this like little jerky pieces of uh like wild salmon. And my wife bought that a while ago, and I took a crack at that right before the podcast, and I about fucking puked. Like I literally was <laughs> I I took about four I just put four pieces in all at once, started chewing, 
I was chewing for about 90 seconds, I feel, and I don't think I actually really consumed too much of it. And then the smell started to get to me. I literally had to go to the bath or run to the fucking uh, <laughs> yeah. kitchen and spit it all I out. See. And like I, I was dry heaven. It was it was it was bad. Like it started out OK because it was like a, it was like a mapley flavored. So it was a little I mean, it was kind of like just think of like a good moist kind of jerky or a, 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 a fish pepperette, if you will. But God <laughs> damn. My wife was like really concerned because I was literally like just a sea hair away from like actually regurgitating like other food. I definitely spit all that out and had to go wash my mouth out. And that's why when we uh, hit the uh, cold open, I had a I had a fucking uh, a cough or not a cough drop, but a a, a a fucking Jolly Rancher thing or something, a peppermint patty, whatever the fuck. You, I'm I'm going to go a, ahead. A mint, a mint yep. in my mouth. I, I, I'm going to cut you off for a second. I'm going to say what everybody that's listening to this is thinking. Yeah. No, Keith, you ate the cat treats. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been bad. You should really well, check the bottom of the bag before I, you do that. No, they were definitely no. That's the hundred percent was human food. But I, funny enough, well, I was I was eating them in the kitchen, just standing there, and my, one of my cats came in and kind of plopped down and was looking at me. And as soon as I opened the bag, she like she she didn't get up and like start going crazy. But I had never seen her just lay there statically and just like sniff and look. Like she gave me like three or four real big sniffs and like stood. Yeah, like, you should just right give them me. to her. I wouldn't I, have fucking wish that upon my worst enemy. Let I alone can't my, my loving cat. I can't for the life of me imagine eating dried salmon jerky. That it, sounds it bad. Awful. Yeah. 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 It's it, it's it it is all in the trash now and it will never be bought. But that's a good like that is a good brand. Like they make really I've had multiple of their uh, pepperettes and uh they've all been great, but yeah. You ever, you ever had that the shitty jerky chew? Or it's just mm-hmm. jerky powder. Yeah, I got that as a way to like help get over rubbing. What the like, hell is the you know, point of that? For me, I literally use it as like a, a as a stepping stone to not chew tobacco. Um, but it's also a gateway for kids probably to chew tobacco. So not a great thing. All right. Well, anyway, but, back to our sure. guests. Yep. yep uh, big you. Emmett. Big question we ask everybody. What brought you to Massonomics? How'd you get here? How'd you end up on this silly podcast? I actually don't know how I found Massonomics. Like, I don't remember how I found them. Um, I just remember one day just kind of being a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I remember meeting Tanner and Tommy at the Arnold, like, pre-pandemic, um, listening to the podcast, and then, like, just kind of following along. And then really like got involved with like the crew and stuff through big Eddie. Uh, you know, we became friends and headed off and like, that's just kind of like where a lot of my involvement came Mm -hmm. with and then being able to like help them at the Arnold, uh, like this year since I was living, I live so close to Columbus. Like that was pretty easy to, to go help with. I, yeah, yeah. You're from Ohio. Like, I know, I know you're pretty close. Um, so um, you know, part of the big notes that we got was that uh, you love Ohio and that it is your <laughs> it's your favorite state. Um, you know, so it's really glad you were there to represent Ohio in Columbus. That was awesome. Yeah, I hate Ohio. We heard I, it is. Uh, I it's not it. my least favorite state. That would be West Virginia. Hey, fuck um, you. This podcast <laughs> is over. Bye. <laughs> big Keith Logan out. Um. And having a drive, like I just drove through West Virginia this past weekend. Hated it like every other time I've driven through West Virginia. Beautiful summer. Uh, no. Oh my goodness, no. Well, um, we'll yeah, we'll what, what is it? Or, what or, is yeah. it about? Like, yeah. Well, so I, I, you know, just for a reference, I constantly trash North Dakota, but it was just because driving through it, like the highways are just garbage. They're just, it's, there's no good scenery. It's just dead shit everywhere. And then, a series driving through North Dakota when you're going from South Dakota into Canada is nothing but like, I want to say oil buildings and just like propane buildings. It's just not pleasant. Is that what your West Virginia? Cause I know West Virginia is very pretty. Well, the interstates are just rock walls. You're just looking at rock Ooh. walls. You're going up and down the mountains and you're got a million turns with a million trucks you on just them. don't like driving through west virginia you have no yeah i don't like driving through you have west no i've not spent much okay, time so, like, okay. in so other I could, parts of west virginia i got you okay i'll forgive that then that, that doesn't I, I like i was was waiting to see if there was like a like a you know oh they're because they're inbred or so it's just yeah it is a it is a hard place no. to drive through, especially 
Um, when I go home now, like the speed limit's 70 and it should be 65 because it's really fucking dangerous to go 70, 75, 80 on some of these fucking windy roads. I'm like, yes. yeah, I'm going to go 65, even though it's 70. Fuck you. And I, Howard, and I, probably, I probably grew up driving them fucking 80 when I was 16, but not anymore. It, was just not yeah, it can get it. dangerous real fast. Uh huh. All the rock walls, all the uh, uh, like all the barriers on the sides of the highways with all the yeah. snow and stuff in the winter. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah, and our, the few nights that I've spent in West Virginia, one of them was because our car broke down because some <laughs> rocks fell off of one of the rock walls and took right. out our tires. So that that, um, that 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 helps with the hatred. I I can see it. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, it. but yeah, Ohio's not far behind. Like it's just like there's I don't know. It's just not a whole lot. Oh, so are, are you for me? If are you, you like dead deer, Ohio's mm. fucking top tier, bud. Dude, my, par- <laughs> my, my parents fucking uh, my parents clipped a deer and totaled their car fucking yesterday. I've been like my mom's, but then my parents have been on like a a twelve week huge vacation just driving across the country, and they're in Michigan and they fucking hit a deer at like ten o'clock last night and in in, in like a dead zone too. Um, mm. so. They had to wait like hours to be able to flag someone down to get them to like take them somewhere to even call a fucking service truck. And yeah, I can like my I get my temper from my dad and my, I know my dad did not have a good day. Um, you know, just they can imagine being like on like the, the back end of a fucking several day, you know, like a week and a half vacation. And your brand we're brand new to him truck that he saved up for the last several years to actually purchase and just fucking clips a deer. And now and, and they're fucking, you know. 15 hour drive from home so even if the truck isn't totaled and does get fixed they're gonna have to take a rental home and he's gonna have to fly back out and then drive the truck home and eat take all this time off and yeah sorry I just, but i just i felt so bad for my parents dealing with that right now my mom's like texting me every couple hours like updates and like, that's yeah that sucks uh, i was but... in michigan are awful too yeah they just have no money to take care of their roads so there's just a million potholes everywhere you go so specifically, then, are you from Ohio? Like, so basically, uh, no, I'm you... from South Carolina. Okay, so where where, where are you from? Where do you live? So you're from South Carolina. Where are you at now? Yeah, grew up in South Carolina, um, in the Midlands of South Carolina. I know there was quite a bit of South Carolina talk a couple weeks ago with Big Grant, mm-hmm. former South, or, you know, former South Carolina boy. So I moved to Ohio for college, and then just kind of never left. Um, so I was living in Toledo, Ohio. Uh, met my wife while she was living in Detroit. Um, and then when we got engaged, we moved to Toledo and we've just been kind of living there ever since. Um, but right now I actually live in a uh, Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Okay. So happy, ha- happy about that change to get out of Ohio. It sounds like, um, you yeah, had mentioned moved from a city into like a really small town and that's, uh, that's gotcha. more my style. Nice, nice. Um, you mentioned Midland, South Carolina. Is that where like the Midland College powerlifting team is, or is that completely different? I don't know. Oh, okay, no, know that's fine. Midland. I just I didn't know yeah. if you I didn't know. No, you, um, you said Midlands. I didn't know if that was like a uh, if that's like upstate. Yeah, or... it's in between upstate and it's, and yeah, it's in between. That's what I feel. So yeah, my like state. so South Carolina is split between an upper and lower state. Is how okay. they separate it for like high school athletics. Okay. My high school, whenever they redraw the lines ever every six years or so, whenever they do that, switches between the upper and lower <laughs> state. Interesting. Um, so when I first started high school, we were in the upper state, and when I, by the time I finished, I was in the lower state. So did you regular? So like, is Big Grant right? Like people do regularly say upstate. Like you're saying upper state and lower state, but he 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 just you know off the off off you know like a like a gunslinger just says upstate. Like is that is that that? Yeah, that common? is the region that he lives in. He lives okay. in the upstate of South Carolina. Uh, there's gotcha. a few like there's the Midlands, the PD region. Um, gotcha. And then I think just like the coast is just what people call the coast. I forget exactly nice. if that has. One. But I grew up in the PD region of South Carolina and moved to the Midlands and. Gotcha. So what got you, uh, was it your job then that got you to the small town that you're in now in Kentucky? Yeah. Yeah. So I work for the U S army as a strength and conditioning coach. So I work at Fort Campbell here on the, the border of Kentucky and Tennessee. Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, was that a, was that a, was that, it's always like, I always, uh, find it intriguing when like, when, when couples like 
move for one person's job like how does that work for the other person is it, you know this is your then your wife has to find a job or does she commute or does she work from home like just in general i always find that to be pretty interesting of like as someone that's yeah. lived in the same place for 15 years and has no intention of moving i'm like oh my god it would take an act of god to get me out of here yeah so right now we uh we live separate so she still lives in toledo oh, for her job so um when i moved here we were i was told that it was going to be at the start it was going to be three four months um, okay. Cause the army was redoing their contract with strength coaches. Um, and like the U S army does, they've, they pushed that deadline back a few months. Um, then they finally chose one and now the deadline's being pushed back again. Um, so it's going to be like a few more months until like, I know for sure whether uh, I'll be still here at this base or if I'm moving another base or well, anything like that. So we didn't think it made much sense to, to move both of us. No, that makes sense. Fair. How how far are you guys apart right now? Then, like, what what's your what's your commute look like on the weekends or something, or however often you guys get together? So it's a it's a technically a seven hour drive, but the time difference makes it eight. Because mm. whenever hard. I go back to Ohio, it's uh, uh going back into the Eastern time zone, so it's like a seven hour drive, and then you immediately lose that hour. That's gonna be brutal, man. That's uh that's a, definitely be a test to your you know hopefully <laughs> hopefully uh. Oh man, I long distance it. How how how? Uh, sorry, how old are you guys? Uh, I am thirty two, and she is thirty three. Uh, no, that, that's it's you're still you got a little more you got a lot more energy at that age than I would now, so I can <laughs> say. <laughs> but no, good yeah, good luck. Yeah, we see each other uh, about once a month, every other like maybe every other week, just kind of depending on like what's going on. Um, thankfully, like the U.S. Army loves a day off, so. We get quite a few Fridays <laughs> off to where I'm able to just drive up for the weekend. That oh, makes that's it helpful. a lot easier. Yeah, that, that would be helpful. Good. That extra day. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, it sounds like you got a lot of time on your hands. So I'm assuming most of that is spent uh, contemplating what Massonomics merchandise you had not bought <laughs> yet. So what's what's that one piece you uh, basically slipped through your fingers and it's not available anymore that you wish you got? Oh, the pocket tee is the one that like I've missed every single time. Um, being one of the few people in the crew wears four X, mm -hmm. got to be quick on the trigger to get those. And I never uh, thought about that. Yeah, yeah, those go very fast. Um, but yeah, the pocket tees. I love a good pocket tee. I love to keep my phone in my pocket. Um, those run I'm, so small. I, I I felt like that run ran. Well, I'm trying. To, yeah, I feel like that ran just a hair small, but I don't know. So a four X might have been a it's like a three X. I don't know, but uh. <laughs> I'm still like I'm still because I have an XR right now that I, I'm gonna have to lose like 25 pounds to probably get back into comfortably if I want to. So, uh, but no, that's, those are good shirts. Um, I did I do really like it I, when I was you know basically before I had gained a good bit of weight last year. I was those were my like uh, my my casual Friday shirts because I could I could you know if I had an office day or something and I wasn't in the field I could wear it you know still get a little massonomics bling in there but still be like you know looks like a Carhartt first at, at a glance so. Those were very nice to have for like a ca casual work days. Yeah, bring back the curl hard. So, All right. you, go ahead. Do you get that? The uh, are you up to date on your Hall of Fame status? Do you know what that is? This gets me into the Hall of Fame. Oh shit! Yes. Da -da -da. This is, da -da -da. Yeah, this is the thing awesome. that does it. I'm That's pretty legit. sure. Uh oh, fact check. Yeah, we'll, uh, uh, we'll have to. I don't uh, know where like my card is. It's somewhere in my apartment. I, I didn't bring it with me when I moved, but uh, I got the spread. I got a spreadsheet of all. Well, yeah, like, but yeah, if you I'm pretty sure this is the thing that gets me in. This is number twelve. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, if I can, uh, I I can send you the, the like a picture or a list of everything, and then you can, uh, if you don't have your card or can't find it, just mark off the ones that you did and send it to Tanner so you can get your mug. Uh, just remind me to do that after the episode if you get a chance. But no, that's awesome. Con congratulations, maybe. <laughs> 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 All right. Do you want to hit him with the least fun, most fun? Yeah, yeah. So you, you and I have uh, have this in common. We, we, we uh, some something we both have been you know doing a little bit lately. So, or well, first off, are you familiar with least fun, most fun? It's just yes. new new game we like to play. So if anyone listening for the first time, this is a game. I'm going to give uh, give Big Emmett here a topic, or well, yeah, basically a topic, and he's going to tell me the least fun thing about it and the most fun thing about it, and uh, we're going to hit him off with college football 2025, the video game. Oh, the least fun is the ultimate team. I just don't care about that at all. I think it's just like a useless feature and 
all the video games that they've ever made. Um, that's the least fun. Uh, the most fun is playing as Michigan and just running over whoever you want. <laughs> Usually Ohio teams in, in your case, you're just like, you fucking Ohio teams. I fucking hate yeah, you. Yeah, and it's it's really funny because like, uh, one of my friends is a giant Ohio State fan. has been playing like his dynasties with Ohio State. And I'll literally just randomly get a text. It's like, Michigan's impossible to beat. And I was like, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, they did win the national title. They have a lot of talent. The video games just showing reverence to the team they should be. Yeah, I was uh, super stoked when that game came back. I think it was gone for what, like, on oh, nine years or something? Eleven basically? years. Eleven. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was so. Yeah, you would have been twenty-one when it went away. Twenty-two. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I was. I was at least almost thirty. So, or well, late late twenties. So that was a big deal. Like a lot of people are like, like my peers are just like, you're excited about a video game. You're fucking almost forty, and I'm like. Yeah, like I played this game from like 12 years old till like my mid to late 20s, like every year. This was back when you went and like bought the video game at the mall at the GameStop mm. at fucking 1150 the night before or whatever, where, you know, they, 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 they did the midnight release on Thursdays. And like I've never waited on a game. Like I would never do that for Madden. It was only college football. Uh, So that shit coming back. Yeah. Like, do you think overall it's been like kind of a letdown, like just overall the game itself? Or do you think it's lived up to? I think it's lived up like to the hype, to everything. Like the the memes of how like some of the glitches online are funny. Um, I've not come across any of those. And maybe it's because I'm not playing head to head. I mm-hmm. just play Dynasty. Um, and that's kind of how I've pretty much have always played the games. Mm-hmm, uh, we used to, we used to like create, we used to play tournaments for money and stuff when I was in high school. <laughs> um, but other than that, like I've always just played Dynasty for however re- long I can run one. I my my I have a couple nitpicks on it. Recruiting is too time consuming. Like I like all if if I I'd also do I do I do offline franchise or offline dynasty and like it takes me like four hours to do a season even if I'm like only playing like two games and then I just want to like because I I really only want to play the game I don't, I I just I enjoy like the just the overall um like just getting to the next season and getting your classes and everything. Like I, I enjoyed that more than playing fucking like 16 goddamn games and just back to back games. Like I want to, I want to see progression in my team. So I, I really enjoy that, but fuck the recruiting. It's so time consuming. And then it's like, and then you, sometimes you'll get like number one class and then other times you get like 30 class and you put the same amount of effort into it. And like mother, this is just a pain in the ass. But uh, other than that, and then like a, a couple glitches hit offline harder because they don't put the effort in to fix them and because they don't care about offline as much as they do online. So I got fucked with like, I couldn't edit athletes when they came in the recruiting class for like basically like three weeks. And I'm like, well, this, I guess I might as well just not play for a while. So I don't know, but I think we put Joey to sleep. So I will let him hit you with a couple <laughs> questions. No, I was actually going through the, the stuff I, I, oh, nice. I went through earlier and I was just like, okay, what can I take out of some of this stuff? Um, yeah, I I like, there's a lot here. What do you have against Saruman? (laughs) I mean, you just got to fight the forces of evil. Like, that's kind of what, like, men are supposed to do. All right. So, yeah, uh, apparently, can you explain who that is for the people that might not know? Which would be wild if they don't listen to that. I don't know. You'd be surprised. There's probably a lot of people that don't know who that is. Um, my wife probably, even though she's seen the movies, def- definitely does not remember who that is. It was like um, eight so, villains that have a name that sounds similar. So I'm like, which is that? Is that like the original Sauron, bad guy or like Sauron. the newer bad guy? I don't fucking. I'm watching. And I'm watching like the the new rings of whatever. Like that's hard. But y'all see the meme going around about Saruman? It was like, all right, Sauron is our bad guy. Now we have a man that works for Sauron. So Saruman is going to be his name. Mm. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, super, I... <laughs> super, uh, what's the word? Creative. Definitely yeah, creative. Yeah. But it's creative. Some of the new Pokemon. Uh, oh, yeah. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a sand hill and it's got a shovel sticking out of it. We're going to call it <laughs> uh, a sandy sky. Yeah. Yeah. That's a sandy sky. Nailed it. <laughs> One of the best ones is the pile of trash. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. It's literally just a garbage bag, and then you, you, it evolves into a pile of garbage, like, uh, or just the uh, the vanilla ice cream scoop. Yeah. V- van- oh God, I forgot the name. Vanillux. 
Yeah, I just started playing again, I think, um, in the past couple of months. So I've just been learning about all these new, really wild and crazy Pokemon that don't... I mean, they make perfect sense, but at the same time, like, no, I was used to, like, the Pikachus and the Squirtles, and then and and now I'm catching a Spookaboo, which is like a fucking half octopus cat pumpkin. What? <laughs> yeah. Like, are, you, you know, are you on a seizure? Or is that a thing? Like, that sounds like something someone yeah, on a seizure would fucking create. Uh, yeah, it's a, it does sound like a fever dream, doesn't it? <laughs> Do you play Pokemon Go? I don't play Go that often, um, yeah. just because I always forget to take my phone out of my pocket. Um, I started playing the video game again, like last year, and the card game again last year. Oh, card uh, game! Yeah, the card game was a—you can play for free on your phone. So that was how I started playing the card game again, mm-hmm. and then started playing an actual like cardboard cards. Uh, but it's a very good way for me to get my brain from thinking about lifting weights Mm -hmm. or like programming lifting weights um, because that's normally what my brain is doing. It is constantly running through different ways to uh, manipulate loads and manipulate accommodating resistance, just pretty much everything that you can think of to get stronger. Uh, uh, That's annoying. Like even playing video games, like my brain is constantly thinking about lifting weights. Um, But if you play a card game, that a little six-year-old is going to talk trash to you (laughs) while you're playing you want to win and so you think about what you're actually doing um and i have lost to like a child who was talking trash to me the whole time (laughs) and it is one of the most frustrating things in the world because you can't be mean to a little kid while you're playing a card game yeah no absolutely not what is your what is your favorite video game right now besides college football uh, Elder Scrolls Online is mm-hmm. one that uh, me and me and Paige, my wife, uh, play um, quite a bit. It's uh, if you ever played any of the Elder Scrolls games, uh, Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim being like their biggest ones. I know uh, Skyrim. The other ones yeah, I'm not so, familiar with. Uh, this came out a few years after Skyrim, but it's a massive multiplayer multiplayer online role playing game. Mm-hmm. Um, MMORPG. Yeah, I only know of so, that because of. And you know what? The the one thing I think we don't talk about enough: World of Warcraft. Yeah, so it's similar, similar yeah. to World of Warcraft. I mean, that was like since I don't think it was the original, but it's always been the biggest, and it's still pretty large. Never played that one. This is the first and only one I've ever played. Um, mm-hmm. But it takes place in the world of the Elder Scrolls, like lore and all that stuff uh but it's a pretty fun game where you just get to run around like fighting evil spirits and uh whatever else trying to destroy the world at the time uh, always something always there's always something that needs to destroy the world well and that's why we need our you know our army strong so is that what you're doing over there like uh so are you doing it uh, i guess we kind of touched obviously you know you're doing some subcontract work for in you know strength and conditioning for the army so do you just want to explain what that actually means what your day-to-day is what you're like you know what is your physical job every day and how did yeah. that happen that that, too. that's kind of what i was wondering how did how were you like i'm gonna be a strength coach and then for the army So the strength coach thing happened because I I started college doing athletic training. So more the rehab and injury, like control part of athletics. Um, That's why I started college doing that. It's not really for me because that essentially is, hey, we're going to give some guy some pills. We're going to tape his ankle. We're going to send him to the doctor. Not really a big fan of all that. So I ended up like leaving that. Uh, And then when I went back to school, it was for strength conditioning because like Something I've always done. I started lifting when I was like 11 or 12. Um, my dad was the strength coach at my high school. So like I've always been around it. So I started lifting young. And, what did your dad uh, bench when he was in high school? Um, Probably 405. That's, that's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just had to get that in there. And uh, yeah, so went back to school for that. And did like the, you know, the internship stuff you're supposed to do at colleges and all that. Um, But college strength and conditioning is also like ridiculous. 
you're going to work 12 to 14 hour days and you're going to get paid very little money to do that. Um, and so there was just a job posting on LinkedIn for the H2F program for the U S army to where you can just go be a strength coach for them. So I applied, got that job, um, moved here. And then what we do is we are, so right now there are seven coaches that I work with. We're, you know, stationed with a brigade, um, and on base and we run all of their PT. So like we are, we literally, everyone knows that every morning the army does PT. Like you see it in every single movie that's ever been made about the army. They're going to wear their shorts and their shirt that say army on them. And they're going to do, they're going to run and do push ups and pull ups and do sit ups, right? Like that's been PT forever in the army. And there are still plenty of people in the army that wish that was all they did. <laughs> um, but a few, uh, I don't know how many years ago now, but the, the PT test changed. And it's called the Army Combat Fitness Test now. The and they with, start uh, off with a three-rep deadlift. Yeah, with a trap bar, right? Yeah. So it's a trap bar, three-rep max deadlift, um, followed by a sprint drag carry, which is just a brutal event where they're literally sprinting. They're going to uh, carry kettlebells and drag a sled and do a couple more sprints with that. And you're trying to do that in a, you know, fastest time possible. Uh, and then it's push-ups, planks, two mile run are also all part of that. And a med ball throw. So that's the new test that we help them get ready for. Uh, and then also get ready for any other testing they have to do. Um, here at Fort Campbell, we have to do a 12 mile ruck once a year. So 12 miles with, I think it's 55 pounds in under four hours. Um, and then in the army, you got to be able to run four miles in 36 minutes. Uh, so, so you're giving them programming or like you're getting programming. Like we coach them. Like we do run. Um, so like the brigade has a few thousand soldiers in it. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have a, each company has like their own little gym in a box. Okay. I was going to ask that. It yeah. has a couple racks where they can do that there, or we have an actual gym. Um, and now we have like the, the company's called Beaver Fit. They make these gym and essentially containers. Um, so we have a few of those. So we have like 24 racks where we're able to, to run soldiers through. So every morning we do PT with them, whether it's lifting or running or rucking or uh, just circuits or whatever else, you know, they might want to do um, to help them do soldier stuff. Um, so and, we run this them is, through PT and then this is also... This Sorry, th this isn't like boot camp, right? This is more like established, like people that yep. you know, people that are already like in their jobs, doing their day to day mm -hmm. military gig, just happen to be at the base, and they just like they have to do this test annually to still be yeah. active, basically. Okay, what yep. is um what's some of the heaviest three rep max deadlift you guys have seen or heard of? Like, and it's a it's it's, it's just a single low handle trap bar. I'm assuming it's not it's not a high handle like rack pull kind of height, right? Okay, yeah, yep, yeah, it's a low handle, and uh, for men it maxes at three forty. Oh, though you won't let them do it more than that, just for like safety. Yeah, they don't need the... to. They don't okay. want to. Like you get a so you can get up to a hundred points per event. Um, mm, okay, okay. And for men, it maxes out at three forty. So there are some guys who are literally going to do three reps that day, and they're going to do three forty for their three reps. Mm -hmm. Like they're not going to warm up; they're just going to go do their three reps. Right. Big, big, big Sam's in the army. Shit. Okay. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> I, I feel I feel better now about our country's uh, safe safety. No, that's that's really cool. I like that. Yeah, there's a couple um couple soldiers that we've had who like do participate in powerlifting and strongman. So like they're obviously quite a bit stronger in the static lifts than like the rest of the soldiers. Um and those are you know, they're a lot easier to coach and everything too, because they're you know, they're used to the movements to where, where a lot of times you're gonna get someone who has really like they have no idea what you know, they're supposed to be doing what things are supposed to look like. So it's quite a bit of teaching, which I can imagine. Yeah. No, that's really cool. I'm, I, that sounds like you're happy with it. And it sounds like you're trying to stick with it. Well, you said you're, you're basically your contract was supposed to be up, but they just keep pushing it back. So you're just kind of like, uh, don't know how much longer you have there or like you're, you, the, do you, 
do you work for another company that they are or are you a private contractor i guess is my is my main question yeah so we're civilian contractors like we're yeah. not we but you you individually work. you don't work for another company that got you the job you you just you know you file your own taxes or whatever on your social and like that's no so we do work for a company okay, okay. Um, nice. yes there is a contracting company that has this contract with the army that hired gotcha. all of us um and so yeah so we just kind of so it, even if Fort Campbell runs things. out, that like you might you'll you could potentially go somewhere else then. Yeah, and the main issue is uh, it's just like the number of coaches. Um, on why like I might have to leave this base to go somewhere else. They're opening up a couple new, um, like the H two F program, the Health and Human Performance or Fitness or whatever it is. I don't. <laughs> um, is like expand. It's not at every base, so it's expanding still. Oh, okay. Um, so they're opening up new bases, uh, a couple this fall, um, and then more next year. And so, like, they're just constantly having to try and figure out where to put coaches. Okay, but there's not. A, it's not necessarily. There's not. There's not more coaches than there are spots, really. Then, so it sounds like you have job security. It's just a matter of where you're going to be working. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, that's good. That's uh, that's cool. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, in the future, you and your wife can kind of <laughs> figure that out and be closer together and yeah. get stationed <laughs> somewhere. Either either you can you can go somewhere where you're pretty much guaranteed like you're gonna be here for a few years and then it's worth her moving or you can just get something close enough. What is the is there any bases even close at all to where she's currently at? No, there aren't any uh, army bases up there. Like the Air Force has a similar program, uh, but theirs is like more in their infancy than the army. So gotcha. Um, like as those jobs open up, like those are always possibilities. But uh, I'm actually trying to get back to South Carolina. Okay. So there's a couple of bases down there. So we're trying to trying to see like how everything plays out to eventually get back down. Nice. So that can uh, lead me to a little FMK then, I guess, if Joey's all right with that. I'll do a little FMK since you mentioned South Carolina. So here we go. You familiar with FMK? Yep. Okay. So we got South Carolina, Michigan, Bowling Green. Take it however you want. You can, you know, take take it as sport. I would assume I would colleges or sports teams, if you will. So. Or playing them on the video game, you know, whatever, whatever it means to you. Um, FMK, South Carolina, Michigan, Bowling Green. We're going to marry South Carolina. It's a pretty easy one there. Uh, we will. Ooh, all right. Let's uh, let's kill Bowling Green. Isn't that uh, your alma? Isn't that your alma mater? Yeah, but it's like I went there for a year. So oh, okay, really, okay, okay. I yeah, just so I, 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 I got it from the, the uh, notes. It was it, you were hard to do research on. If people didn't. I, I think I saw Bowling Green on your. Public yeah, I did Facebook, the so the the reverse like, Dave Tate. So Dave it, Tate started college at Bowling Green and finished college at Toledo. I started college at Toledo and finished at Bowling Green. Ooh. Um. So like, yeah, I went there for a year. I did a. I did a, an associates there in Toledo too, like a, a Owens Community College, and so uh, yeah, Bowling Green like doesn't really have no. Too I much. Uh, then I yeah I wish <laughs> I I wish I had caught that on like I I think your your Facebook was wasn't public, so I only saw Bowling Green, but I would I should have had I, yeah. And so sub, like sub Toledo did, in there, uh, then if you want, <laughs> I did uh, like quite a bit of like coaching at Bowling Green. I did get it's kind of like where I did a lot of my teeth cutting and coaching mm -hmm. um, interned there for a year. And, um, the head coach at the time, Kenny Goodrich gave me a lot of like freedom to, to actually coach for someone, you know, who hadn't graduated and been certified yet. Like he put a lot of trust in me to, to actually coach athletes. So awesome. uh, I do love it, but we are going to kill it. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to F Michigan because Michigan's a pretty cool place. Nice. I do like I do like the state of Michigan. Um, you know, it's where uh, me and my it's where me and Paige met. Uh, we spent a lot of time there um, because obviously, like we lived apart um, when we first started dating, and so like <clears throat> every week we used to go on dates and uh, in Michigan. So yeah, cool place. But so as someone from Ohio, what is your what is your go to college sports Rudy team? Like I guess so South Carolina probably, but like is there an Ohio team you root for? I root for Michigan. Okay, okay. Uh, Michi okay. Yeah, Michigan's Michigan. been my team my my whole life. Um, yeah. It's fair. Like yeah, we grew up 
Like my grandpa was able to get us tickets to Michigan Ohio State games when I was a kid, always in Ann Arbor. Uh, Toledo is like where my dad and his family are from. That's 45 minutes from Ann Arbor where the University of Michigan is. So like, gotcha. Yeah. So hate Ohio State. It's like one of my least, I just, I hate the school. I hate uh, the coaches associated with it, the player. Like, it's, I was it, uh, now, and, and was that a topic that you talked about a lot on your, uh, on the, on the podcast that you hosted in college about college football? Yeah, your, that your, your definitely hatred. always came up. Like, was uh, you can't like pick against Ohio State because they're always good, but when they do mess up, you can always make fun of. Them. Well, I want to hear more about the podcast. So well, that was just a segue. That was a bad segue, yeah. I guess. So, like, yeah. So when I was doing my associates, I uh, I co-hosted like a sports talk radio show. Okay. Um, where we essentially we we covered every sport. Um, but we did spend the majority of it, like essentially, like picking and talking about the different college football games, um, because that was like our the biggest interest that me and my co-host shared. So was that a, was that a podcast or was that like on on a college radio like FM thing? Both. Okay. So it That's... was on a college radio show, but it was pre-recorded. Okay. Neat. Uh, so it was like released on a different day than we than we recorded it. Uh, but it was like played as a radio show. It's tonight the first time you've uh, cut your teeth on uh, being on, on a podcast in, since then. Then, yeah, other than the, like the call in to uh, yeah, yeah, to Massonomics. Yeah, this is my first podcast I've actually been on. Nice. Well, we're glad to have you, buddy. All right, my turn. Cool, yep, my turn. What is the musical artist right now that you can't stop listening to that you wish more people knew about? Uh, Sierra Farrell. She Never is heard of a, hit it. She's a country artist. Well, I think I heard, uh, right? they talked about her on the OK podcast the other day, I think, briefly. Yes, they did. Trey brought her up. Yep. She's amazing. An absolutely amazing voice. Um, and she's starting to, like, finally, like, I guess, get bigger shine. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Zach Bryan had her open for him on his latest tour. She's on the new Post Malone country album. Um, but yeah, she's pretty awesome. Like her her newest album has some just really, really good, like more traditional country style songs. Which good. I'm a big bigger fan of. Yeah, that's that's the kind of like I don't like country. Uh, I don't like chrome country, I call it. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah, you're anyway. I won't get too. I won't get too into that. But I think when I say that phrase, I think a lot all of you know what I mean by that. Um, so where do you stand on the Kendrick and Drake? <laughs> Who? So I, don't know. I am a I'm a big Kendrick fan. Like I don't have many regrets in my life. When I was a freshman at University of Toledo, Kendrick Lamar played a free show in our student union, and I didn't go to it. Mm-hmm. And this is when he only had one album out. So he hadn't blown up yet. Like very few people knew who he was. Like it would have been a show with maybe 50 people there. Mm-hmm. And I didn't go. And I think about it way too often. Yeah, that's definitely going to come up a lot. <laughs> um, but also like, I, I don't like Drake. Just, I think his music sucks. It's boring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah his, his voice annoys me. <laughs> So like, Jimmy from yeah, Russell. that was pretty easy for me to like side with Kendrick, even if Kendrick's songs ended up being worse. They weren't. No, they were uh, not. Yeah, no. So like, <laughs> not like us was an incredible <laughs> song. Yeah, so it just makes it even easier to choose Kendrick and that little beef they had going. That I don't know. Drake keeps like teasing that he wants to restart on Instagram I, or something. I wouldn't. Like, yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't. wouldn't either. Like it's. He just, I don't know, I guess he wants to lose again. Like, I don't, I'm not really sure. What, what <laughs> Once I get out of this grave and get accomplish. these cement shoes off my feet, you're done for. Like, no, <laughs> sir. Uh, yeah. But anyway, I just thought that would be a funny question because, you know, Tanner keeps asking Jack that question. Um, <laughs> it's, it's it, it, you know, I, I won't get too political, but let's just say that uh, uh, I'm from the area that Drake is from. And it everything that Kendrick said has always been a hushed, well-known secret. You just don't, you just don't bring it up though. Right. 
And then when Kendrick finally said it, I was like, you're not supposed to bring that up, dude. <laughs> but he did. <laughs> also, uh, Drake parks his private jet at the airport by my house. Um, but he lands in Toronto and then flies it over here. And then just parks it over here because it's cheaper. And that just pisses me off that I have to pay damn taxes on my gas and wash my garbage while this guy's flying his private jet back and forth between cities just because the parking is cheaper. So it just pissed me off. <laughs> so I was just like, get him. Get him, Kendrick. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Too political, eh? <laughs> I don't know enough about either of them to have much of a... I don't. The only thing I know about Drake is that he played Jimmy in a wheelchair in Degrassi 10 years ago. 20 years ago, probably. In De- Degrassi? Degrassi? Was that a big show? I think I... I it's I a Canadian it. TV show. It was made in Canada, yeah. I know. Is it not pronounced Degrassi? Isn't it Degrassi? I have no idea. I feel like it's Degrassi because of, hey, here's my next thing. Mount Rushmore, Letterkenny characters. Uh, Shorzy. Cracked. Um, (laughs) Mainly because, maybe this is a hot take, Shorzy's the better show. 100% accurate. He has to be on there. Um, And then Wayne. Uh, is obviously going to be on there. Um, <clears throat> we'll just see. Yeah, we'll just put like the main characters: so Squirrely Dan, uh, Dairy. Actually, I'm trying to decide if I want to put Dairy on there. I have... Yeah, uh, I think I'll put Dairy on there. I mean, without them, the show is not the show. Yeah. Like they are just like the core of it. You need the core. Pool. Um, yeah. Um. Okay, so yes, but Bonnie McMurray, Mr. McMurray, Bear. he makes me laugh every time. But the bartender, when she finally like leaned into this, I, I know, I right? I'm trying to remember Bear. her name. Oh, uh, it's not Claire. Oh, fuck. And when she finally leaned into the character and she would just stand there and just like wiggle as she talked <laughs> and just say really inappropriate yeah. things. She was that like, eventually that got to me, and it was every time she'd be on the screen, I would die as she like did I, that. Yeah, Gail. Yeah, that's just Gail. Yeah, can we just build another mountain and just put like I don't know the entire just like main cast on it? <laughs> I yeah, Shorzy is a better TV show, but I don't think it's a better comedy. I think that Agreed, yeah. it's it's definitely a, a better written storyline, a better written TV show. It's better. I made. cried the first time I saw the season one finale of Shorzy. Yep, it's a very like, good is, show, but I don't think it's it funnier a, than Letterkenny. No, but it is a perfect sports show. Yep, yep, yes. And there's not a there's not enough good sports shows. There's not enough sports like drama. Well, well, not, and not I think they ones. do such a good job of like keeping the story and the drama of everything just built into the sport where I feel like if there's other sport like drama shows, they end up essentially just leaving the sport. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. 1% the, the the game and then 99% like their personal lives. And their affairs, yeah. their like, affairs and drug addictions. This is like 70% the sport and then like 30% like their personal lives. Did you guys ever see the goon? Yes. Yes. Uh, with, uh, fucking American pie guy getting his yeah yeah. yeah 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 and 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 Liv Shriver that was actually filmed here uh both of those movies or the second one at least was filmed here I think both of them were filmed in my city I think I did watch both I'm pretty sure they were both straight to DVD or whatever or straight to streaming no Goon was Goon was, was definitely it? put out in theaters was for sure. sure Goon 2 I don't think so but Goon yeah, 1 for sure and that's that was a pretty good starting point same with again if you haven't watched Good Cop Bon Cop another sports movie that shouldn't be a sports movie but is what is it? Good cop? What? Good cop? Bon cop? Is that a Canadian movie? It What's is. It's that? Canadian. I've never heard of it's this. It's a movie. Canadian and French Canadian. Okay. And it is um uh, an officer from Ontario has to work with an officer from Quebec on hunting down a serial killer who is killing people associated with a hockey team that is being sold to an American company. So it actually structures around when the Nordiques were sold to Arizona, right? And some guy goes crazy and starts killing all of the people associated with it. Um, It is a very funny movie. 
I, you might have to be a little Canadian to get some of it because it's actually a bilingual <laughs> movie, so there is going oh, to be subtitles. No, yeah. yeah, I don't read and watch movies. Or I couldn't yeah. find it because I still couldn't hear the third word you said. Bon, B O N. Good cop, bon. bun cop. It's French for good. You say it weird. So every time you say it, it sounds different in my <laughs> fucking ear. B O N. Good cop, bun cop. Very niche at Tabra Mac. All yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> it's, not, it's not coming up on IMBD, so I'll look for it later. Doesn't exist. Yeah, I don't know. I, it'll be hard not on Glaze Search. It's never existed. Yeah, Nate, when are you going to figure out how to fix Glaze Search? Come on, man. Nate's people, not here. People, people need it. Well, he's listening someday. Anyway, so that's our that's our I Canadian TV show can, movie sports I talk about show talk. I can talk about Underrated shorts. sports adjacent movie hunting, I think, is you can consider it a sport. Also, Canada adjacent takes place in the UP of Michigan is Escanaba into Moonlight. Mm. Uh, if you've never seen it, it's a comedy about a family that goes hunting in the UP of Michigan. Um, it involves aliens and a bunch of drunk guys out in the woods. Um, and it's like one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen. But for some reason, I just die laughing okay. at it. Um, yeah, it's hard to find. Um, pretty sure Jeff Daniels is in it. Good actor. Fun, yeah, fun story. If you put me in the woods in Michigan, I would be a drunk alien as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my Mount Rushmore. That was my game, but it just kind of led me into, um, from the saying Degrassi, Degrassi, because in Letter Kenny they call it, um, instead of degrees Celsius, they call it Degrassi. <laughs> yeah the neil degrassi uh, i got you what did um what was that clip that i shared today of grant what the hell did he say oh questionnaires question, question no quite yeah he said questionnaire <laughs> like 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 mountaineers and i'm like that's i'm not just hearing it like everyone else heard it right and yeah and questioned the same thing like and that's i don't is that a, as, as a south carolina fan is that a dialect thing or did he just pronounce it wrong oh uh... Let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say it's a dialect thing. It's not my <laughs> particular dialect, but uh, there's quite a few of them around South Carolina. So, I no longer like somebody... have my southern accent. Um, I've lost that by living in Ohio for a decade. Um, but, I mean, I used to sound like a hick whenever I see, like, old family videos. Like, I can barely understand myself, so. <laughs> Do you... um? As I, I, uh, I, I, I don't know what your social life is, but do you ever do you ever tie one on and your accent comes out a little bit? Because that's when mine will show up. If I'm a few year beers deep, it's uh, I'm definitely a lot more southern twangy. I think it does a little bit. Um, it'll also like pop back. All I have to do is go spend a week in South Carolina. Yeah, same. and it'll start to slip out. Uh, there's some words where it will still come out. Apparently, pie is one of them. The way I say pie. pie that He's the one that just got his stuff. Instagram deleted. Yeah, that was just gonna. Oh, you beat me. To you. Well done. <laughs> that's what. That, that's exactly um, what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, there. I guess there are some words that'll do it. Um, but yeah, I, I don't drink too often anymore. So, like, I don't. I'd have to. Yeah, that's what I didn't. I didn't want to assume. I'm not trying to. I don't. Fuck it. No, we, I mean, we we did go down to to Nashville a couple weekends ago to to celebrate one of our guys getting a new job. So. We did. Uh, we tied one on that night. Nice, nice. Is there an Ohio accent? <laughs> yes, um, but it's like it's a very like mild accent, I think. But I do think people in Ohio have a little bit of one, and people in Southern Ohio do tend to have a little bit of a Southern accent. Um, some people from Ohio from Southern Ohio will argue with you that they are Southern. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, laugh that's in their faces. Pretty fucking north. That's that's. Yeah, laugh in their faces. Don't listen to them. Like uh, that's a ridiculous statement. Yeah. Like it's, it is more egregious than like the whole Ohio being in the Midwest. I was just gonna ask argument. you if Ohio is in the Midwest. So yeah. <laughs> I don't truly care if Ohio's in the Midwest, but I do like to say it's in the Midwest because it, it's going to make people upset, especially my friend from Iowa. She gets really upset about it. So, like, Ohio's going to be in the Midwest forever. But Where does she like, think she is? She thinks she's in the Midwest. She doesn't think she calls Ohio the East Coast. 
That's not. Oh, okay, so she's not from Ohio. No, and that's when I always oh. joke. Like, yeah, I mean, obviously, people will talk about the coastal elites of Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, yeah, definitely, that's up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I I don't really know what Ohio is. I just kind of call it like essentially the Rust Belt because that's the part of Ohio that I live in. Mm. So that's kind of where I fall on that. I also that's don't. That's probably the Midwest. I do think my argument for Ohio being the Midwest is that the majority of the Toledo area outside of the city looks just like Aberdeen. Mm. And well, if Aberdeen's and the Midwest. Barren? <laughs> Yeah, there's cornfields. I mean, just farms for... Ever. Yeah, farms, cornfields, Menards. <laughs> it's about as Midwest as it gets. Yeah. I fucking uh, love well, Aberdeen. To keep carrying... <laughs> I almost got stuck there and was like, I just live here now. This is fine. <laughs> <laughs> to keep building on our, our geography topics, I got one here for you that I want to know about. So uh, is it true you're an international model? Oh. Yes, it is. I want to hear that story. Uh, I'm an internationally known former male model okay. and I'll, this actually feeds in pretty even more now than, you know, at the Arnold this year, my name tag did say that I was the big and tall model for massonomics. Hell yeah. Um, but in high school, uh, Southern living magazine was doing a article about uh, the mayor of our city. Because he was like in his 20s, so he's pretty young, especially in like as old of a city as we lived in. Camden, South Carolina is the oldest inland city in South Carolina. Uh, a lot of history there. Um, Revolutionary War battles were fought there. Uh, a lot of the homes from, or well, not a lot, but a few you know, homes from that time period are still there and everything. So big history town. And we had a guy in our in his 20s that was our mayor. Um but he was a part of my church there. And so like we knew him and uh Southern living wanted some high school football players to wear their jerseys and, you know, lean up against a 50 Chevy in the background of the picture. So I got the call and me and me and my friends, Roland and Shabar are leaned up and wearing our football jerseys and jeans up against this old 50 Chevy. Uh, so that was the start of my male modeling career. Great. Nice. And then internationally known is because like I have you know friends outside of the US. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I was like, I was curious. So it's yeah, yeah. I was making sure it didn't uh it wasn't. Yeah, like when I was in college, I used to to party with um the Toledo golf team and over half the team was from Ireland. Ooh. God. So you send one of those home with a magazine and now you're international. I got you. <laughs> that makes sense. Oh, so big old conjugate method fan I hear. So, uh, just, uh, is that, you know, have you had a chance to meet some of those guys in person through seminars and whatnot? Like, did you get a chance to meet Louie when he was still kicking around and you yep. know, pick, pick, um, pick, pick Dave's brain and everyone? I like, oh, there's so many subsects of conjugate. Are you a purist mm-hmm. and only Louie's way is right? Or does everyone kind of know what they're talking about and just do it their own way? It's a little bit of both. Uh, I think if someone was to take the book of methods and sh- literally just run like the basic style of conjugate that is in the book of methods, you're going to get stronger for a very, very long time. Um, but I do also think how a lot of people have taken the conjugate method and, ex- you know, changed it to fit their needs work really well. Um, but yeah, I got to meet Louie a couple of times going to West side. Uh, you know, it's kind of a perk of living in Ohio. It's only a couple hours away. Um, and despite the uh, the reputation that they kind of had, Louis is, you know, always, always welcoming and, and open to, to sharing knowledge. So I got to go there a few times and, you know, listen to him rant and rave about, you know, whatever he wanted to rant and rave about. And then uh, I've gotten to meet quite a few of the people uh that are like you know big and famous uh in the in the conjugate world i think the person who is the best right now at it is is laura phelps uh, i think she has like the best grasp on on conjugate style training on the planet 
Um, she's as close to Louis as we have anymore now that he's dead. Um, and I've gotten to like shake her hand once. I haven't been able mm-hmm. to like pick her brain or anything, but uh, yeah, she's she's pretty awesome. She also has a you know ton of content out to be able to learn from and everything. And then, um, is she still lifting or is she retired? She's retired from competing, but yeah, she. Mm-hmm. You know, well, she's yeah, still, that's what I meant. Yeah, I can be. Yeah, yeah, she's still yoked yeah. as fuck. I'm sure. Yeah, she. You know, she still has like. I mean, she runs the biggest uh, you know female powerlifting meet um, in the country, the, the women's pro am every year down over in Cincinnati. Um, that's always a giant meet that she runs there, and it's pretty awesome. Brings out a lot of a lot of people for that. Um, you know, things that she does for the sport of powerlifting are, are pretty awesome too. But I think she's probably the best when it comes to conjugate that's that's there. But there are a lot of there are a lot of good coaches. Uh uh Connor, you know, conjugate X strong, I think is really good. Obviously Dave Tate has, you know, any kind of information you might need on conjugate. Um I think I'm pretty good at it. Uh I do really like just the base. Um, book of methods, but I've made my own changes around it too. Yeah, I think I think it's the most flexible style of training that exists, and mm-hmm. that's why I'm such a big fan of it. Nice. Um, no, oh, what has it led you to do? And like, so what is your um? We know we know we know what you do for your living. We know the you know the method you like. What's your actual lifting career like competition wise? You've done some powerlifting, strongman, anything like that. When I was in high school, I did whatever South Carolina called their like power meets or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, it was squat, bench, and clean. Okay, like, um, a, like a like a power clean. Yeah, gotcha. And I don't remember what my numbers were then. Um, Just a thousand pounds, probably. You know, each 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 lift. Squat was just slightly under five. I think four sixty five was probably the biggest squat I hit in one of those competitions. Mm-hmm. Um, bench would have been right, a, right around 300 and then my clean would have been two something nice um, cause those were like my numbers in high school and then like my senior year is the first time I squatted and pulled 500 or deadlifted 500 um, and I benched 325 for the first time then um, so I did those when I was 17 then you know I took a long while off of lifting um and then got back into it, and then yeah. So technically, the only official powerlifting meet I've done was lift hard, live easy last that's year. What I, that's what I thought. I remember you telling me, or I heard. Yeah, and the the main goal was to squat five hundred in competition, uh, which I did on my second attempt. Nice. Um, squatted five forty on my third, and I think it technically should have been a good lift. The front <laughs> judge <laughs> gave me a red light on depth, and that's not the front judge's job. But it got two red lights. It is yeah. what it is. Um, can't, you, know. okay. you got the 500 monkey up your back. So that's there's there. You got that. Yeah. I just want to be able to do it. And like I've squatted, I'm, you know, there's 15 years now between my first and most recent 500 pound squat. <laughs> nice. So that's like, incredible. So like like I, we'll, 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 we'll see you back in another 15 then. Well, 14 now. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That'd be pretty awesome. <laughs> um, 46 or something. Yeah. I like, you know, the most yeah. recent one is, is a quip. Like I kind of treated my body like trash, you know, between playing sports and then, uh, you know, just, you know, party and can help do that too. But, uh, that's why like, I do like the equip stuff. So next is uh, we're going to get a four or five bench in competition here. I think pretty soon. Nice, nice, nice. Um, Love mm-hmm. to see that. So, yeah, so I think I did. Like, I think it was like two eighty seven at Lift Hard Live Easy last year. Um, I don't really remember what I hit, and then I deadlifted like three nineteen or something. Because at that point, I was just ready to be done. <laughs> yeah, I pulled all of four deadlifts last year. Deadlifts are overrated. <laughs> I've been dealing with a, uh, I have like a pinched nerve in my right leg. Ouch! And I can squat fine. It only hurts when I deadlift. That's weird. Does is it your hamstring or quad then? It's in my quad. Okay. Like it's it's really weird on how it works. Yeah, that's um, weird. Yeah, so 
you must be a very hamstring dominant squatter then you must not like be very uh oh, that's close, the beauty of stance oh yeah well, side, yeah you fucking get. sumo squat so yeah yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm, who am i talking yeah so so you 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 probably couldn't squat fucking 135 on an ssb with your feet close together then but you could fucking you know sumo squat your your 500 i like it okay yeah there's a there's an instagram post from a few months ago so like right before i moved so it would have been in like february it was really bad to where i literally couldn't do like a, a single leg extension with like 20 pounds on my right leg but I could still do all of my dynamic effort squats perfectly fine. The body's uh the body's a crazy thing. Well, what, what, it'll, what it'll let you do in, in some planes of motion and what it won't in others. And, you know, it's just, uh, you know, it's good to still be moving. So I could, uh, one more, I could right now easily squat 300 pounds for one rep. But if you asked me to do 135 pounds for five, I'd kill you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Cause like, my knee is just so it, just to bring it back to your point, my knee is so upset with squats that it's like one single one at a ton of weight. Fine. That's fine. Just go do it and leave me alone after. <laughs> but you start doing volume and my knee is like, no, this sucks. Never do this again. So I hear you on that one. Well, I think I, I got one more thing I want to pull out. And then if there's anything else you wanted to hit before we get into some more games, but uh, I, I just want to hear, I, do, I don't really have a good way to shoehorn that into unpaid or underrated. So I had a few different people submit a, a similar thing that you, you really like, or you really don't like, but basically uh, I'm told that you, you love always being right. You love winning and you hate <laughs> losing. So I guess, is that uh is that just something that came from sports? Um, and, and, and like, I guess, rank them too like do you I, I don't really know how to put this in a game or anything but like because like people always say what do you do do you do you love winning more or do you hate losing more so i guess that's that i guess that's my question and in general you have to hate losing more. yeah like i do think that that is kind of like a key thing like yeah i hate i always hated losing never wanted to lose in everything, like, like in, in, yeah, in, like in winning is cool, but not losing is even better. Yeah. Uh, so you have to hate losing, and and it's not that I necessarily love always like love being right. It's just that more often than not, I am right. Mm. I don't. I, I can't tell my wife that even. If... <laughs> yeah. You gotta pick. You gotta pick. I mean, I. I. You, know, you just gotta learn to pick your battles. I guess sometimes for sure. All right. Yeah. I was just, I, it, I had multiple people. I think you might, I'm not sure if you said it about yourself, <laughs> but there were, there was at least three occasions where that popped up and I just didn't have a way to shoehorn it into the other games. So that's really, uh, I think we're about an hour and a half in. So if we don't know if we want anything else, Joey. So, so yep. who would win in a fight? Sauron or Darth Vader? I mean, Darth Vader. Yeah. Sauron. Time. Yeah. Sauron, <laughs> like, I don't know. He loses a lot. He just kind of just went through. I mean, he just lost like every time. So did Darth Vader. I mean, yeah, <laughs> well, he didn't lose a lot. Kind of. He only he only ever beat like he lost. He lost to regular... lava. Yeah, you know, yeah, like... the, only thing he, the only thing he really beat was a bunch yeah, of young ones. Obi Wan fucking cut his. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Obi Wan cut his legs off. Uh, but yeah. like, I I guess I mean. <laughs> I guess. I guess in both instances, like at one point, they're a part of ruling the world. Do you think Darth Vader uh, likes winning more or hates losing more? Uh, I think he hates losing more for yeah, sure. I think he, I think he hates fair. losing a lot. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I know. I was, I was it was a good. Uh, it was a good. It was a good comparison. <laughs> I will say. I mean, I guess we'll see how like Rings of Power handles Sauron. I mean, I, I've seen the first two episodes of the show, and I kind of stopped. I didn't even, yeah, I didn't even watch the first season. I couldn't. We went and saw the first two episodes in theaters because they were doing that. We thought it'd be pretty cool. And and it was pretty cool to watch that in theaters. But then, like, we, it didn't get us to keep watching the show. Yeah. I like it. I just did. Well, you guys are both more into the, do you have you guys read like the actual, like, I mean, I've read like, Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, but I haven't read like the prequel, prequel, like all the other shit. Not 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 since I was a kid. I can't Wait, stand I mean, Tolkien style of writing. I, uh, to me, it's too. I, I mean, it's <laughs> literally dated because it is fucking dated because it's a hundred years old. Yeah. So, like, I yeah. love, I love all the books that like people were motivated to write because of him, but I don't really like his books at all. Same with uh, uh, uh William Golding. 
wrote Lord of the Flies. I distinctly remember really loving the storyline, but hating reading the book. I remember uh, I'd read I'd read Edgar Allan Poe five times before I'd read Golding. <laughs> anyway, we did, we did a book report on that. I think I did a book report on that in seventh grade, and then we had to watch both movies too, like the seven, the fifties, sixties, yeah. and the nineties. Very weird. Oh yeah, I don't think I've seen any of the movies, but I do have, remember having to read that for school and just not really care. Do you want to do some unpaid and underrated? Yeah. So They're coming this, up on yeah, like an hour and good. a half. Yeah, yeah. So we have this game we like to play. Yeah, we created it. Um, I'm sure anyone listening uh, is familiar with it, but we got any uh, Emmett's uh, friends and family listening for the first time. So similar to a common game that uh, some amateurs play that's called unpaid or underrated or that's overrated or underrated. Wow. What are you? I know. I what just are you? Every that. guest we've ever had. Oh, fuck. <laughs> God damn it. And Nate, fix, just just use some AI and fix that in post or something. So, so we are not overrated or underrated. We are unpaid or underrated underrated so if there's a topic that you you know you, you think is pretty good you go ahead and call it underrated you think it's a little shitty then we'll call it unpaid so big emmet let's let's hit you off here unpaid or underrated breakfast from wendy's underrated uh burritos delicious but they're they're hash brown uh, like replacement which are just seasoned like potato wedges awesome Definitely nice. underrated. More people should go get breakfast from Wendy's. Good. We'll have to, to add that to the list sometime. Well, I'm not counting macros, at least. <laughs> we don't have Wendy's breakfast up here, I don't think. It's wow. It's pretty new down here, too. Like, yeah, I don't think all of them have it. Past couple years. Okay. All right, Big Emmett. Unpaid or underrated the NFL? Unpaid. I hate the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> I'd much rather... I don't know, I just much rather watch college. I think it's like growing up in South Carolina, you know, we don't really I mean, now the Panthers exist, but Yeah, when they come in like well, they were they you were you would have been ninety seven. Like, you'd have been young and you would have been a kid when they came in. That should have been like that should have been the team that you were like, Oh my god, we have a team now. Like Yeah. I, I think it was just already I was already sold on college football at that point. Like yeah. I was all about college, just never really cared about the NFL. I mean now like I just kind of like keep up with players who I've coached who are in the NFL. Like it's cool to keep up like with their careers. Um, but yeah, as a whole, it's definitely unpaid. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go two more and then I'll leave four for Joey. So unpaid or underrated the bow tie from Mr. Donnie. Th- uh, actually, no, no, the bow tie from Spud Inc. Not Donnie Thompson. I got that one wrong. <laughs> I was going to say that's from Donnie. I think so. The bow tie is Donnie Thompson's bow tie. Oh, but it's in it, but it's made by but Spud. Yeah, Spud, yeah, Spud okay. Makes okay. It. that makes more sense. Uh, yeah, yeah. Under thought threw me off for one sure. of the like the best pieces of equipment anyone can buy. Um, I don't think they make the yellow one for twenty five dollars anymore, but that used to also be like the best deal that you could get in like a piece of equipment. Um, but like, for, especially for people that have uh, like bicep tendonitis a lot. I mean, that is just a a great tool to help fight that off. Keep your shoulders feeling good. Uh, yeah. I mean, how does the, how does the bow tie help your bicep? So it's all because of, so where yeah, your yeah, bi- yeah. How the bicep runs into that. Yeah. Into I guess shoulder. I'm thinking I have like, I have like forearm and elbow stuff and not really bicep. Per yeah. Se. So, okay. I, I see It'll it help with that too, because a lot of that's coming from, you know, pinch nerves and just based on like where the brachial plexus runs and originates from and runs through your shoulder into your arm, like any of that compression around there is just going to help out, help calm everything down and, and get you. I can, I I can tell Keith isn't on juggernaut because juggernaut Mm -hmm. says how your biceps and the glowing thing shows you where your biceps are. (laughs) Um, And it's funny. That's actually not how I knew that. But as soon as you asked that question, uh, for those of you, obviously, who can't see this, uh, Emmett and I both just started showing exactly where it goes up your shoulder because it's like yeah. if you're releasing tension off of this, that right? Like sense. it's a weird thing, too. I had a massage therapist friend that said, like, this muscle here actually would tell you how much back pain you have. So they would be able to, like, squeeze this and it would tell you how much tension you have in your upper back. And it's just, again, your muscles are all related. So. Anyway, yeah, that, that was really tight. 
if you have a really tight pec, that just means everything in your back's just stretched out. So you're yeah. just not gonna be feeling super great. Yeah. It makes sense. Um, all right. My last one here. I, I don't know. If, I hope it's not a typo. Maybe I'm just dumb, but uh unpaid or underrated hot pot. <laughs> Do you not know what hot pot is, Keith? I have no is uh, no oh, it's underrated and you need to go find one. Yeah, yeah, you gotta go. You <laughs> of all is people. Is this like faux or something? I don't know. <laughs> is this I Korean guess hot like, pot or, or like yeah, what kind it's of doing? Korean Korean hot pot? Okay. Um we have one in Toledo that we go to this Korean barbecue and hot pot put together. Uh, yeah, it's it's like one of the best deals you can find in food. Um, but yeah, it's amazing. I love that you led with like its value, not like the the quality. Or oh, no, the so. quality is why oh, it's so okay. valuable. But yeah, like that. Yeah, it's part of it. I mean, part of eating out, there's got to be value in it yeah. nowadays. Um, but like you're with looking at something. Yeah, yeah, with everything going on. You got the value is important, but the right, quality. Later. We're not letting that one die. <laughs> but the quality of food that you're going to get for a great price, and you're going to have a great time, and you're going to leave extremely full. I find it great time. I'm sorry, Emmett, to cut you off here. Um, I find this actually difficult to believe, Keith. You've never been to a hot pot. I, or, have, have you been to not. Korean barbecue? Thank. Get your passport. That. Come up here. <laughs> me and, me I think and we, Steve I, will take you. We got a bunch of them up here. Now that we're talking about it, I swear, like I've, we've even had this conversation before. I think I think we've had this. Like <laughs> I think it's been talked about that it was someone's favorite food. I don't remember. Maybe Big Brad or something. But I, uh, I know I, there's there's Korean and there's Mongolian. Um, hot pot in particular. Well, Korean barbecue is the only one I'm really familiar with, and it's literally just there's a hot plate in the middle of your table, and you just order what you want. And then they deliver your foods, your meats, your proteins, your plants, gotcha. and some sauces, this, yeah. and you just cook them. And it's the best. It's the best. Yeah. It seems like work, but like, seems like a value, lot of work. Can, value got... over cost versus flavor. <laughs> well, I can go outside and just throw some steak on the grill and not have to leave my house. I have my, my, my biggest hurdle get it. to you going like out is just literally, oh, I, it, uh, steaks, it's getting fucking old. Like I just, I like not leaving my house <laughs> a lot. Especially you get I, it. You I, like dried salmon cat treats. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm gonna have to next time I actually throw something out too. Like all that's gonna smell is gonna be wafting out of the fucking trash. Oh, can. that's the worst. I gotta not open that. Ugh. All right, I'm gonna. I'm passing it off to you, buddy. You got the baton. Uh, I really wanted to make funny of the cat treats thing a little more. You okay, did. that's like the third time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, memes about it. If someone would actually make some memes for us. Unpaid or underrated uh, vegetables? Uh, they're underrated, un- unfortunately. I wish I could say they're unpaid, but uh, vegetables are important. People should eat them. Um, this is something that you know Paige tells me often, mm-hmm. and uh, you know I do have to relay this information to people that I coach and stuff too. But there's a lot of value in a vegetable. There is the value again. What's your What's your favorite vegetable? And how do uh, you sweet eat? sweet potatoes? Yeah, uh, sweet potatoes are the best. I, there have been times where I literally just like my dinner's just protein and sweet potatoes. That's the spirit. Can we call a potato like a, yes, a potato is a vegetable, but it's a like, root. It's a root vegetable. It's, it's not a vegetable in the terms of like if you're counting macros, a fucking potato is a carb, like in the sense of that. I guess I don't know, like not a sweet potato, isn't it? Like, a sweet potato's it... got a little bit more value. Like, okay. There's like, more getting... in a sweet potato than a regular potato. Okay, but like to get like the true nutritional value, doesn't it have to be like basically a green vegetable or like a? Well, if we're gonna go green, Brussels sprouts are pretty good. I was just, I, I'm not, I'm not, I love fucking potatoes. I'm just, well, I don't love fucking. Yeah, you, you like, yeah, you fuck a lot of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I, love potato- I love potatoes as well, but like, I don't look at a potato as like a vegetable per se, in the sense of like. I think it's one of the only things that are right. actually vegetables. I'm not saying. Yeah, I guess I'm not. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, not... do we want to get into this again? Kale is a fruit. <laughs> I was trying to. I was trying. I was trying. That's what's hard. Sometimes when you see the message on Discord and you don't really like, you 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 catch the beginning of it and then like you think you got a good zinger and like seven people already fucking said it and you're just like, well, shit, I can't yeah. make a soup salad fucking sandwich joke because it's already been uh, alluded. To. Yeah, well, we can't put it in a smoothie. Well, <laughs> like spinach isn't a fruit, no matter how. What did Jeff say? You can't violently make it a fruit. And I was like, kale is a fruit. Everybody was like, how dare you? Uh, all right. I mean, is um, is avocado a fruit or vegetable? 
think they're what technically a fruit. Probably. Except a seed. I think it's a berry, technically. Which, right, so yeah, berries are fruits. Nuts. Yeah. But like we treat it like a vegetable. Do we? We put it on toast. I put jelly on toast. Jelly's Bear. made from fruits. I put it on burgers. Put a little jam on a burger. Jam your burger. Um, I put avocado. Oh, like, is guacamole then like a jelly? Not a word. That's a great question. That yeah, like, you need to investigate. like it, I don't know if it's a preserve in particular, but I think it's. Is, it, it, they don't fucking last very long. I can't. Like, is, gu- <laughs> it's fucking is, is guacamole. Hours. Is guacamole a sauce? Guacamole? Guacamole? Is it a Planet sauce game. or is it? All right. All yeah, right. Played... They're going to make fun of us on this one. Played that in the arcade. <laughs> guacamole. Uh, guacamole. Most of the time you do add acid, so it could be a quick pickle. Yes, because you are adding the lime juice. Quick Is quick pickle a term? Like, is that quick, a thing? Quick like... pickle? Yeah, it's, it's when you pickle something quickly. So is that like just putting like <laughs> pouring, pouring vinegar on a fucking cucumber? Is that a quick pickle? Yeah, essentially, yeah. Essentially, I did. Yeah. I saw I saw a lady like like on a YouTube reel or something where she like cut up a vegetable, added some like balsamic vinaigrette or something, and like shook it up and like made it like a, a salad instantly out of that. I'm like, I guess it yeah, give it that little like tart tarty taste to it. Yeah, if you uh if you partake in cooking competition shows, you'll see them do a lot of quick pickles where they're just gonna slice an onion real quick and then just throw it in some vinegar. I I think you have to heat quick it. Pickling. Yeah, you have to do something to it, like heat it or pressurize it very quickly mm. to to actually pickle it. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. Interesting. All right. I'm sure, again, they're going to mock us for that one. Unpaid or underrated walking out your squats? Unpaid. This is dumb. <laughs> it's the fucking we have, and I do it We anyway. have the technology <laughs> in the year of our Lord 2024 to use monoliths. We should just use monoliths. <laughs> yeah, I, we'll, just, we'll just throw one right in the basement. Yeah, I, I can see like I get raw lifters are we it's America. We walk out our squats, but I, I get raw lifters should also use the monolift. Yeah, walking out squats is the thing that I hate the most about squats. To be honest with you, so have you got a uh, monolith attachments at your army base on any of them, or do I you do guys not, have any, and... do you guys have any say in the equipment at all? Uh, my boss, the like our the higher ups do. Like I, I don't really. Oh, we can make suggestions. Um, I don't have any mono lift attachments, and I do have to walk out all of my squats using a straight bar right now. Yeah, I was and, gonna ask. Uh, are, are you just train? Are you training on base, or you're not like yeah. you're not leaving to go find like some dirty hole in the wall power lift? Go to my own gym with hookers and blackjack. No, it's a <laughs> it's a pretty sweet job. We work from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. and we get to train on the clock. That's the best fucking schedule. That's that's my favorite (laughs) shift. Uh, Six to two, no lunch, and just go home. Yeah, that does sound great. Uh, So, yeah, I'm I'm not a member of a gym. I think if I was like getting closer to competing, I would have. I would have done it just like. I mean, I'm not even. There is a power bar that we have. I couldn't tell you who makes it. Like, there's not a single marking on this bar. <laughs> the only reason why I know it's a power bar is because the collar is a little bit thicker than an Ollie bar, and there's a center knurling. Yeah. Now, this bar bends with 405 on it. <laughs> so, it is it's the sketchiest very, power bar. Uh, when I did, I squatted 505 last month or a month and a half ago or something as like my top set that day and it was the sketchiest 500 pound squat i've ever done and i thought it was going to break the bar um so like if i was getting closer to competing and i was hitting those squats every single week um i'd probably go join a gym that had some real like texas squat bars or how cool would it have felt if you brought if you broke that bar though it would have been pretty awesome it's like breaking the backboard. Um, like, yeah, that was awesome. But now, shit, I broke the backboard. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, but I, yeah, I just, it was, I was, I was actually like nervous squatting. I've, I've never really been nervous squatting 500. Most of the time I've done it by myself. Um, 
like out, no spotters or anything. I know how to get out of the way of a, a bar if I ever have to. Um, but that would, I, I was, I was nervous and I had three spotters. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Squatting 500 by yourself. Um, unpaid or underrated making your own knives. Underrated. If you ever get a chance, you should do it. How do you, how do you uh, do that? Do you, do you smithy them or do you just like assemble them? Smith, uh, have a friend uh, who makes knives. And so I uh, was down in South Carolina last summer uh, hit him up, hang out, and we uh, got to make a chef knife. That's awesome. Uh, it was, uh, you know, it's over 100 degrees outside, 100 degree community, you know, typical South Carolina summer day. And uh, we, we spent it by standing it right next to a forge all day. I have I have a smithy knife here. I didn't make it, but I got it um, at one of the the Highland games. So that was right off of the forge. So they made that, attached it to the ram's horn. And that's one of my favorite knives, but it does stay hidden because <laughs> it's 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 sharp, and the children should not know about it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, if you ever get a chance to make your own knife, I was just it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a lot of work. Would you make an hit. axe or a hatchet? Yeah, I, I think it would be a little bit easier to make too. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess the, I guess depending on the size, but a lot less like you know surface area like you don't have to shape it as much i feel like i mean mm. that was like the hardest thing that's kind of where i messed up the most was actually shaping the blade so thankfully my friend was able to to fix my mistakes amazing do you still use that knife i did not bring it with me mm. when i moved but i did use it quite a bit um after i i mean i just i never want to I didn't bring a whole lot with me when I moved out. Cause I actually like I moved the weekend of the Arnold. So wow. I literally packed up everything that I was bringing with me in my truck. Um, I put it in me and me and big Eddie's like hotel room that weekend. And literally the Sunday morning when I left Columbus, I loaded up my truck and drove here to Kentucky. So you moved during the Arnold. Well, at least now, you know, you didn't have to work out that day. <laughs> Got it. Uh, <laughs> unpaid or underrated this is my last one uh deleting social media uh underrated i do it quite often um especially like now during like political campaigns mm-hmm. um i just don't I'm care kidding. like i don't i don't care about people's opinions um so i don't want to see them and the easiest way to do it is just to remove myself from that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I will just delete Facebook and Twitter pretty, pretty often. I'll just delete them for weeks at a time and, uh, you know, pop back onto them whenever I feel like I, I need to. Uh, Instagram is literally the only one that, like, I won't Same. delete. And that's because my Instagram feed is curated of, of the weirdest memes you could find. Yeah, I I rejoined Facebook and I regretted it, but it's for for the kids, right? So, yeah, I don't. I agree with you a hundred percent. And it, there's no there's no political conversation to be made in memes on social media, <laughs> and people just love posting them. They love putting them out there, and it's it's just like you know what? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Pardon my language. Yeah. Yep, don't care. Yep. A big Keep like going. a big shift that I've made in the past like year is just it sounds bad, but it's not caring about things. Mm-hmm. Um a friend of mine puts it in like a much better way that you only have so many fucks to give, make sure they're going to the right things. Um and that is if it affects me or Paige or people that I actually like love and care about. I'll care about it. Mm-hmm. Everything else, I don't care. For for me, it was it was having kids. Your world shrinks so dramatically. Where it used to be, you know, the things I said and did matter to the world around me, but now the things I say and do matter to this little person in front of me. Right? So, you know, you start suddenly working inward, working on yourself. Then you start realizing all of you people care too much about weird shit. And that's, that's where I got like You just, you, 
think and say and care about a lot of stuff that doesn't affect you. And it's weird to me. So that's, that's essentially where I disengaged a long time ago. And I used to be very, very engaged. And yeah. it was just, I still like, I mean, I have my own opinions on all of, of these course, things. me too. I don't right? care to share them with people who don't mm-hmm. want to hear them or like, and I just, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people, Twitter was a bad invention. <laughs> Mm-hmm. social media i guess just in general is uh everybody got a voice and not everybody needs one like there's the old um what dan carlin is that the comedian's name george John, carlin. yeah george yeah george carlin dan carlin's hardcore history uh george carlin has a bit where he talks about how dumb the average american is Barely. You know, he's like, think about how dumb the average American is. And now realize that half of the country is dumber than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. and yeah. When you actually think about it, oh, God. you're just like, all right. Yeah. Not everybody needs yeah, a voice. I, I see a lot of people. Yeah. yeah so mm-hmm. like, uh, it's just a lot easier to just not care about like what those people have to say like what's trending on twitter some person had a a dumb comment and now like everybody's making fun of that person just giving this idiot more and more like clout and what we can do is just hit the block button yeah blocking people Uh, on on twitter was my favorite thing in the world yeah i'm a big fan i have a very quick block finger Mm -hmm. um just because, like, I don't care. Like, I, I use Twitter to laugh at jokes about college football. Hmm. Uh, Discord and Twitter, are, there's a Discord that I'm a part of that was related to a college football podcast that's not really about college football. Um, that and Twitter are my two favorite places to, like, keep up with college football. And it's all just jokes. Um. So that's what I use that for. So like I will block things so fast. And yep. Facebook I only ever use to keep up with my gym in Toledo because that's where like our owner posted like any kind of update or anything. So that's basically mm-hmm. what I use Facebook for. Like most people that I'm friends with on Facebook, I don't follow on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So when I, I when I rejoined, I just see their you know, I unfriended so many people. It was like a 45 person list. I was just like no, 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 no. And it was anytime <laughs> they would post something, I'd be like, oh no, I don't see that enough. Like I was just unfriended yeah. so many. All right. There's your social media and political talk, folks. <laughs> oh, we yeah. did it. Oh, yeah. We did it. Get I think you team. passed unpaid and underrated. You did. And I just I got one more question for we to hand the range over to you. So you had mentioned you're pretty much done by two two, two thirty every day. Monday I was it Monday through Friday, or do you work like seven days a week? Yeah, or? Monday through Friday. Okay. So what the heck do you do for seven, eight hours every day before you go to bed? Since you're you're alone, uh, you're just playing video games. You yeah, you're pretty many... much play okay. video games and take naps. Nice. <laughs> okay, that's good. Uh, guy has, uh, to me, yeah. it kind of sounds like you're like you 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 consider it that you moved. I, I if I were you, I would I kind of consider it like yeah, you're just you're you're just working out of town for six months. You know, I basically am. I live in an Airbnb currently. Okay. Uh, because. I'm surprised they don't have a was... base in like some like 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 they don't have like a uh, civilian housing or anything. Oh, I wish that would make it so much easier. Yeah. Um, do you do you but, have to pay uh, for your lodging, or is that part of yeah. the, the deal? Yeah. Okay. That stinks. Um, you think the the kind of that setup would be kind of included, but <laughs> no, there's like I th- there's a few bases where I've been told that they do allow like the civilian contractors to to live on, but it's a it's an interesting thing because, like, we are in charge of Army PT. We are very clearly not in the Army. We are just civilian. So the power dynamics with all of this are wild. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> they do not have to listen to us at all. Mm-hmm. Um, because we are not in the Army. Um, so it is a, it's all just very interesting on how all of it works i mean it took me uh it took five months for me to actually get my id to get on base i was living off of 30 day passes Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So uh, other than a, a coach, you're just a strong suggestion machine. Yeah. So uh, we're <laughs> great resources. We're like the best thing we do is like almost educational resources for them. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause like what we do outside of PT is just like personal training, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, if soldiers like want to get stronger, they need to get better at different parts of the ACFT or, you know, they're, uh, they're training up to go to any of like the schools to get their little badges. Uh, you know, Fort Campbell hosts air assault school. So like if people are getting ready for that or like the, um, you know, if they want to go be an army ranger, they want to get ready for that. Like we have programs and we offer coaching for all of that stuff. So if someone's trying to go special forces or if they're just trying to like get stronger or just even just for like general health, like, Hey, I'm not going to be in the army forever. I just want to be healthier. Um, so we're there for, so like, uh, we do PT, we tend to eat breakfast almost like together as like a coaching staff. And then we train and then we hop right into coaching for the rest of the day. And then like we have to do meetings and all, you know, that kind of stuff too. But, um, yeah, sounds it's pretty, like, sounds pretty sweet. Yeah. It it's, does uh, sound cool. it's a pretty awesome job. Like, uh, now did, did you, I, did, did, did you did you let them know that you're not available next July? Uh, so, so somewhere towards the end of the month for uh, you know a few days. You gonna are you gonna run it back out out to uh, you know you 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 made it to LHLE one, but you uh, you know you sat out this year. Are you gonna think you're gonna make it back for number three? That's the goal. That will be the my next powerlifting meet. Essentially, so get nice. back out. The oh, yeah. main reason why I sat out like this year is. Um, a pinch nerve probably didn't help. <laughs> yeah, I decided I need probably just like get that taken care of, um, and probably not just like keep trying to just squat heavy and not deadlift. So, uh, so you decided you need to that better. you have. So you have actually are you getting like care on it essentially? Yeah, I don't think there's much care I can really do other than like figure out exactly where it's pinched and. Yeah, I said I don't Get know that if that's something that was like a specialist that actually like. I no could MRI. probably like use our physical therapist we have on staff to get some help, but um, that seems I hard. Don't. Yeah, that that seems like hard work. <laughs> well, it's not even that. Like, I I know it's a pinched nerve. I know how to. I mean, I know how to fix that. I mean, it's just literally there's a weakness somewhere. That needs to be fixed. I know what's my right glute is about where it is, like causing the weakness, like in my right glute and hamstring, are causing the front side of my leg to just gotcha. be overactive and pinch down on it. So it's been just fixing that, and it's getting much better to where, like, like I couldn't like run because, like, literally, like my quad would stop working mm-hmm. either. So uh, it's getting it's getting much better. So. Just doing uh, uh, unilateral leg curls for days. Yeah, that and just like I don't know, actually like deadlifting and working on like mobility and flexibility and all that. Because I have another pinch nerve on the right side of, in my bicep too that I have to fix. So like the whole right you're side man. of my body's just like a mess. You're a mess. He's 32. You're falling apart, man. You gotta wait till you hit 37, 38 to fall apart. It's really funny to see on like my bench. Um, there's will always reach a certain point where it's not a strength deficit, but literally like my right tricep will turn off. Mm-hmm. And so the left side of the bench is going to be completely locked out while the right side is on my chest. Yeah. I got that. Mine's not that bad, but I, I get, yeah, I'll lock out my right and my left is, you know, when it's when we're like 95% or above my left's a good quarter behind. So that's a thing. And it, and it's weird because it, it's the same. It, it correlates over to overhead press now too, which, so it's, 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 it's on bench and overhead. It's very strange. Yeah. And that's part of why, like, I, I'm like in the equipment too. Um, literally any kind of compression around, um, my shoulder or my elbows f- completely fixes like the issue. So, uh, like the, uh, my raw bench is sitting right around like two thirty, two thirty five right now. And I'm going to bench four Oh five and equipment here pretty soon, which is a massive difference that you don't normally mm-hmm. see, but the, f- it's, it's not a strength issue on the raw it's literally my right tricep turns off because like my left side just shatters it it's just yeah 
you can like my friend and he literally talks about it. he'll be spotting me he goes yeah you can literally see your right tricep just not activate I'm like just sick. the window shut down noise do 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 yeah yeah <laughs> so it's just it's pretty awesome to deal with that well I, this has been a blast do you have uh or anything else for him joey before we switch the switch it around so again you're familiar with this next segment that's where uh, we kind of hand the reins to you buddy if you have anything for us any questions any games any bits anything you want to throw at us it's yours i don't really have much um that's fine too. I th- yeah i think uh basically everyone should go buy the book of methods read the book of methods go watch west side versus the world um even though louis reportedly hated the movie it does give a lot of insight into to west side and the ridiculous you know people and stuff that went through it uh but uh yeah go lift some heavyweights don't be okay being weak that's okay (laughs) good advice all right. Well, well, that's all sound advice. And here's some other good advice. Go ahead and hit up our affiliate links. Help us out with that. So we got Obsidia, Obsidian, Barbell Rescue, Plate Snacks on Home Gym Con. Uh, use our code unpaid at any of those. We get a little kickback. And we also got Belt Fed Strength and Strength Co. where you guys can save 10% also if you use that code unpaid. And uh, Big Emmett, where you want to hit us one more time where they can find you? Yeah, I'm on Instagram at Emmett Reese Reyes. Um, also have like a a business Instagram I have not used in months called Reyes Total Performance. I follow that. And uh, yeah, that's it. I have a Twitter, but I don't use it, so <laughs> there's no point in following me there. I'm not actually. I really don't know what that is. I got locked out like after Elon bought Twitter, so I had to start a new one. Uh, because you know he fired the people that handled like the resetting of accounts and stuff so <laughs> uh i have a twitter i actually i don't know what they handle this i don't tweet so what is having instagram. dm you in at in, 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 yeah instagram's the you. place to find me awesome uh big jerry where are they gonna find you at buddy uh instagram at joey underscore molesco uh speaking of mitch hooper I do have a 10% code for his stuff that I don't hawk often enough. But if you are going to buy any lift heavy, be kind apparel, you can use my code Joey 10 and we'll do 10%. It is pretty high quality. He uses tier for most of his blanks, um, which is some decent high quality stuff. The shorts look really good. Um, Beyond that, don't find me anywhere else. Nice. Uh, go ahead and follow our Instagram if you're not already. Unpaid and underrated podcast. Go to the website where Nate puts all the work in. Unpaidinternpodcast.com. We got the YouTubes. Leave us a review on or uh, go ahead and you know race for first comment, etc. Over there. Uh, hit us up on uh, was it Apple and Spotify. You can do some reviews and ratings on both of those. I think you can even do. I haven't checked. Someone should actually look on our Spotify. I think you can sh- like actually people are commenting on episodes. I'm not sure if we have any of those, but I another podcast I listened to talked about that where Spotify now has a, a comment feature but it might only be for like people that only exclusively do spotify i'm not really sure but uh nonetheless uh i'm big keith you can follow me on instagram at keith honey 73 go follow my orange gym the no wine cellar and we will see you next tuesday uh-huh.